gathered friends listen briefly to our legend of the Bionicle. Bionicle was a toy line of action figures released by the LEGO Group throughout the 2000s. Accompanying it was an epic tale of biomechanical heroes, the Toa, traversing the universe, using their elemental powers to save its people, the Matoran, from the evil forces of the Makuta. Written primarily by Greg Farshti, with some contributions by others, and told across numerous novellas, comics, movies, and online story serials, what started as mere escapades on a tropical island soon turned into a grand exploration of cities and continents and civilizations suspended inside the Earth-sized, star-faring robot body of the Matoran's god, Matanui. During a climactic battle for power, Matanui was ousted from this body, banished by the Makuta to the remnants of a planet torn asunder. This, Matanui came to learn, was the birthplace of his forebears, the Great Beings, and it was his destiny to heal the shattered world and unite its people, though he still felt duty-bound to the biomechanical beings that had lived inside his body for those hundreds of millennia. By winning the allegiance of the planet's tribes and repairing the broken husk of a prototype for his old body, Matanui was able to stand once more on equal footing with his long shadow now commanded by the Makuta. The two titans clashed, and Matanui prevailed, sending Makuta and all his body's inhabitants crashing down to the planet's surface. Using the last of his power, Matanui fulfilled his mission, reforming the planet's ferrous magna into one teeming with nature and life. As he faded into dormancy, the natives of this world, and those who had lived inside the giant robot, were faced with the duty of learning to live in unity, as one people, in their new shared home. It was time to forge their own destiny. And then Greg decided to keep going, writing more stories and introducing new plot threads, many of which weren't unresolved, as he's a busy guy and he wasn't really getting paid for any of this, as the Bionicle storyline had ended production, but before we see how the fans of Bionicle address this dilemma, I'd like to talk about this show, Gathered Friends, for any newcomers. Gathered Friends, hosted by myself, Chip Wiseman, was a way to get my good friend Levi here immersed in the story of Bionicle, as he was curious about it but had never read it before. He, I, and two members of the Beaver House YouTube channel, Liam and Josie, read through the compiled works of Bionicle, chapter by chapter, and discussed it in this podcast, kind of like a book club. This gained quite the unexpected following, and each episode we were joined by guests ranging from other fans of Bionicle, newcomers like Levi, to even the author, Greg Fashti himself. But we finished that. There was no more Bionicle to read. So what do we discuss now? Well, remember those unresolved plot threads I mentioned? A dedicated and talented group of Bionicle fans banded together, under the name Lightstone Studios, to make good on Bionicle's unfinished business. Initially formed to restore the lost Bionicle PC game from 2001, Lightstone branched out into authoring faithful continuations and conclusions of those unfinished stories from the end of the saga. Although a lot of the work, perhaps most of it, was finished by the Myths and Legacy team that was formed separately. With the aid of Greg Farshti, who provided insight into his original vision for the stories that he couldn't finish, Myths and Legacy published these works as the final chapter in Vision of the Great Beings. And that is what we have read in preparation for today. But it's a new start for this show, and some changes are needed. For goodness sake, we're on Sheridan Radio now. And so I think it's time for someone who's a bit more qualified to take the reins. So, with all due reverence, allow me to introduce this season's host, Max Dudek. Hello! I'm very happy to be here. Thank you very much. Hello, and let, let me introduce you in the, to our show in the same reverent way as the first season was introduced. Penis! There we go. <laughs> wait, wait. Uh, hold on, hold on. Is, uh, I have a list of things I'm not allowed to say on the radio here. Um, I don't actually see that on here, so... Okay. Oh, <laughs> Huzzah! Uh, Welcome yeah. everyone back to the show. How how are you guys doing? How's everyone doing today? It's been a weird five years. Oh my god! My insanity so has only has. got has only grown grown more thorough. <laughs> As have we all. I read Homestuck. I read Homestuck last month. That'll oh, do wow. it. It's one insanity. That'll do it. Mm -hmm. That's quite a that's quite a time commitment there, eh? Mm -hmm. 
Mm. What was what's all this about Bionicle? I thought this was a Homestuck podcast. <laughs> You're right. I think I, I was going through working on the the trailer for this season a while ago, and I think one of the um, w- one of the episodes had art inspired by Homestuck, so it, it, uh, it sure will be. <laughs> yes, an intentionally bad web comic within a web comic made by one of the main characters uh, called. Uh, uh, Homo sex? Hella Jeff and Sweet Bro and Hella Jeff. Sweet Bro and Hella Jeff. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> a, a running gag where uh, characters, whenever there are stairs, characters will fall down them repeatedly. Yeah. <laughs> How over and over again. Them. Also, uh, stairs, dog. Oh, and also Homestuck had like a lot of music made by Undertale's. Uh, guy Mm, that's true toby toby fox who is not a furry (laughs) so how about that bionicle huh yes (laughs) we're already back onto our waffling ways (laughs) i warned you i warned you i knew this here we go waffling along (laughs) don't worry i've set a timer we're we're good i'm gonna have a timer going off every hour to keep us on track because (laughs) we are strictly on a three-hour window this season (laughs) Let's Max, get, get us back on track. Then. Yes, In- challenge right. accepted. So, shall we start with the first story? I no. think so. That seems like a good place. All right. Hmm. So I, I've decided we're going to start with Light on the Dunes, since that's a sort of prologue to this whole uh, chapter of the story. You know, okay. in the grand scheme of things. That, that doesn't sound okay. familiar. Did I read that? Oh no. Why did you? It's okay. Uh oh. Uh oh. Stinky. I thought I I read. Uh oh. Stinky. I thought I read the required reading. Oh no. (laughs) Don't worry. We'll we'll, we'll get it done. Yeah. Yeah. Light on the Dunes was the one with uh, Takanuva and the water people and the Skrull. That's it. Oh, yeah. I read that. I read that. Mm. I didn't read the chapter titles. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It it was very short. It was like a three part thing. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Should we say who wrote it? I believe. I, believe. Hmm, believe I, wonder, I wonder. I wonder who that could oh, be. Oh God! I, I wonder what, uh, what possibly uh, extremely talented individual could have written this thing. I don't know. No, uh, Dave Strider from Homestuck, <laughs> author uh, yes. of, of Sweet Bro and Hella Jeff. Yes. Uh, hello, it's me. I'm Sigma. Um, I I actually did write Sweet Bro and Hella Jeff. Um, I wish <laughs> I did not write Sweet Bro and Hella Jeff, but I did write uh, the first chapter of Light on the Dunes. Um, I planned we're to doing write. It. We're fine. <laughs> we're doing it. We're making this happen. We were. we're making this happen. <laughs> I uh, I planned to write uh, the other two chapters of Light on the Dunes, as well as the continuation of The Powers That Be. Um, unfortunately, personal reasons made me sort of take a break from the project for a while, so uh, this first part there was my only real published contribution to the project. Um, I've recently come back as more of a like advisory, uh, creative consultant kind of role, um, mm-hmm. so I'm pretty active nowadays, but uh, this is all that the public really sees, so... Yeah. yeah, and that that's kind of the role I take on as well in this whole thing. Like, mm-hmm. I, I didn't write... It, I, I kind of try and separate Lightstone a bit more from Myths and Legacy when I can, mm. because all we really did was carry the bare bones of this project since, like, 2014. Mm-hmm. And then we just kind of contributed to discussions about what the actual writers were going to write. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. I like the sto- story Nova, planning like, kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. I like that Takanova has existential anxiety now. He is so much more relatable. Oh, Let's don't go. worry. There's, there's <laughs> going to be a lot more of that coming up, but yep. I can't speak too much about that yet. Mm-hmm. Like, what do I even do here? Why am I even here? Wow, <laughs> what is my purpose? There's yeah. a lot of me suddenly. Wow. It, 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 <laughs> insert insert uh, Mega Man X4 Zero. What am I fighting for? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. But yes, uh, let's uh, let's let's get into a quick summary of the story real quick for our listeners, and then oh, yeah. we can go headlong into the discussion. For mm. light on the head, head on, apply directly to the forehead. <laughs> Understand. Fair enough. Right. So, um, uh, would you like me to dive in, or would somebody else like to do the honors? That uh, sounds like a you. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. All right. So, um, for those of you um, unfamiliar with the story, or for those of you whom the, uh, the previous little summary there didn't quite cut it, 
Um, so the story left off with a very large gaping open plotline about the inhabitants of two entirely different, you know, uh, worlds, universes, suddenly having to share this brand new planet together. And then their, uh, their benevolent deity figure just says, all right, figure it out. And then goes to sleep. I see. In, uh, <laughs> yeah, he just decides, um, there's, there's some thematic weight behind it. A lot of his predecessors had like gone mad with power and governed too much. But then Mata Nui decides, I'm going to, you know, end this cycle of violence and just not govern at all. And surely everything will be fine. Um, and so he goes to sleep inside a piece of headgear and just assumes that global geopolitics will sort themselves out. Um, so I wrote Light on the Dunes um, in order to sort of introduce this, like, massive plot hole of how are these people going to get along? These people with millennia old rivalries and completely unsolved, um, you know reasons to fight each other um how is that all going to get resolved i wanted to just introduce that um and centering all this is the character that many bionicle fans uh, i'd say probably all bionicle fans know and love by this point uh, the character of takanuva special boy golden boy quite literally um he was he, uh, he, he's basically the main character of bionicle at this point <laughs> yeah yeah if anybody yeah. if any character can be called the main character it's probably takanuva um he yeah. was a uh, he was a small uh lonely villager you know maybe didn't have much going for him but he was very curious small about the world the mm -hmm. small you know may maybe maybe boy. relatable to the target demographic right and then you know mm -hmm. hey kids you know um just because you don't come from a powerful background or, you know, have a lot of money or whatever, why you can become a hero too, and then why he becomes the first Toa of Light, so he gains the powers of laser beams and friendship, which is what every small boy wants. <laughs> Matt, Matt, um, can, can, can you imagine how different Bionicle would be if mm -hmm. the, the original like studio script for mask of light where like a human gets sucked <laughs> into the bionicle universe had actually uh, gone through sorry right. what? no yeah, no they, it, they um er, yeah so er, early um, on when mask of light was in development there was <clears> the idea i think was made by the producers i don't know if it was creative capers thing or if it was someone else higher up that suggested like let's bring a human into the bionicle universe and they become the toa of light or something like that let's make it and easy, i think okay. i think greg had to jump in and was like no we're not no. fucking doing that <laughs> oops yeah <laughs> and uh, there's I'm one for the so swear so jar so Oh, there's another one. <laughs> and then uh, the, 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 okay. I think I think it was something like we're we're gonna do if if we do this, we're not making this movie. <laughs> yeah. Everybody that watches movie, everybody that watches movies knows that every time some that every time a an, a thing gets ad adapted, somebody's all like, "But what if a con but what if a normal everyday consumer gets sucked in?" Yep. The fictional world and uh, and shenanigans and like that is at this point so overdone mm -hmm. that uh everyone is sick of it I mean, that and then they happen. decided to make galador instead and all was well <laughs> thank <laughs> you oh, for oh, that galador uh, uh, galador yeah. friends when <laughs> <laughs> i uh, friends in the outer I, dimension I, I swear I would I swear I would actually be real hyped for that because I have watched all of Galador at least twice. Wow. I, I wouldn't hate it either, honestly, but one show at a time. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Indeed. <laughs> yeah. So uh bringing things back over. Um so we have uh Takanuva, arguably the main character. We've gone over him. Um and he is escorting um some of uh some villagers, some of the small people that uh, that his kind protects um through the desert. So this was formerly a desert planet. Um, it's been, uh, it's been upgraded to, uh, like a more lush, repaired, natural planet, um, but I, 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 uh, you know, this is where I started making, uh, creative decisions. I thought that, you know, there still might not be enough, uh, enough, you know, moisture and nutrients to go around, so some areas would be desert. Um, so he's escorting some villagers over to grab some water, because even though they're robots, they need to drink, it's very weird, I know. <laughs> when who should appear um, but a group of Skrell. And Skrell are, were introduced fairly late. Um, they're this species of um, nefarious, hunchbacked, uh, warmongering uh, militarists um, who just want to conquer people. Um, they do have a, a bit of a, um, of a, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, kind of like the like, Romans. 
Yeah, yeah, sort of. Um, except, like, mm-hmm. as they're portrayed in 2009, they have a bit of a, um, not, not sentimental, uh, like, understandable, I guess, because, like, their people are being pursued by murder robots, and so they kind mm-hmm. of do need a place to live that has no murder robots in it. But that doesn't matter here. Um, you so... know, the good old, you know, the good, that that old chestnut. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I, so I did want to say, actually, um, oh. I, I kind of sympathize a little bit with the Skrull in this, just because, like, mm-hmm. as far as we can tell from the information presented, this is their land, this is their oasis. The Matoran yeah. are just kind of trespassing. <laughs> well, it's, it belongs to, the, like uh, belongs to the Magnan people, or the Glatorian Agori people, uh, but the Skrull specifically do come from over on Boda Magna. They were just pushed mm-hmm. over here by various factors. But anyways, I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay. Uh, so... Um, Takanuva is escorting the, a bunch of these, uh, a bunch of these, uh, villagers, the villagers of water, and as everybody who's, uh, who has experience with Bionicle will know, water characters are all women, apparently. Except, um, except they're not. for the ones that are not. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> except, except for when they're not. Um, so, yeah, just a minor detail there. Uh, when I think, suddenly... I think Vizok was the first one, actually. Yes, Vizok was yeah. the first water character to be a dude, and they made him incredibly aggressive and insane, just to prove that, yes, we can do dudes now who are colored blue. Um, it's, it's a miracle we got Gorast at all. Anyways, who should pop out of the sands but a patrol of Skrull? Um, now, earlier in the story, their leader had been publicly humiliated and rejected by his very militaristic culture. But that militaristic culture survives, and without an organized society, they have no food. So uh, Takanuva is trying to help these villagers get some food, or water, when these Skrull come up, and they're like, Hey, we need that water too, to survive we have swords, these villagers don't. So we're just going to take the water, you know. Um, and Takanuva's like, hey, that's immoral, you know, uh, like, screw off. And then they say, well, make us. Just stop it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Stop it. And, Get and some so, help. <laughs> exactly. Um, so um, these, uh, these dehydrated, starving warriors, uh, you know, like, aren't in a position to take his moral claims. And so they're, uh, so they, so they fight. Um, but of course, because he's a superhero with laser beams, he easily defeats them. Um, but they Absolutely plant a seed of dumpsters them. Oh yeah! Oh no! It's <laughs> it's not even it's not even a contest. But by um, the time it's them. over, they're just standing there with like melted weapons and armor, and they're still oh, yeah. trying to fight him. Right. He right. disrupted their phalanx. I thought nothing beat to the phalanx. <laughs> <laughs> they're de- yeah. they're determined. I'll give them that. They they come from a society that uh, that had not seen many laser beams for the past hundred thousand years, so they were caught a little by surprise. Yeah, they their their only projectiles are fruit. Yeah, um... <laughs> exploding fruit, but still just fruit. Yeah, um, exactly. Eight, so six, six fruit. <laughs> So he complete, completely bodies them, uh, but they plant a seed of doubt in his mind, making a persuasive argument of, like, what makes your people more worthy of survival than us? Ooh. And Takanuva, um, who is, uh, like, set in this rut of, you know, like, oh, I'm a hero, I do the hero thing, kind of has his mind set into doubt over this. Um, ch- chapter two rolls around. Um, another character who is his ally, Toa Gali, she's the Toa of Water. Um, she rolls up and says, hey, what are you doing? Uh, you look like you've just seen a moral dilemma. He says, why, I have just seen a moral dilemma. Um, but let's not uh, bother with that. Let's go back to the main camp area where all the people are hanging out, trying not to starve to death. Um, lo and behold, everybody's starving to death. And the question of, like, who deserves food in this drastically underdeveloped economy consisting of, like, a bunch of desert refugees... Like, who deserves to eat, right? And um, so he walks up and he finds one of the locals, uh, one of the, like, the species, the organic species that built the robots. And he's like, you know, hey, um, I see there's this, uh, there's this big strong guy who's trying to bully somebody else out of their food. Um, you know, bullying is bad. Uh, <laughs> make it... A brave statement. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> bullying is bad. You know, like make bad, him... okay. Yeah. Um, you know, Let make it him... Be no- that is our official stance. Exactly. Well, exactly. It is it's bad. actually a mock. Gathered friends, twenty fourteen. Yeah. And let it be known that is my stance as well. I want to make that clear. We live in a world where we do not have to worry about food. Thankfully, I'm just exploring this narrative space because I think it's interesting. Speak for personally. yourself, uh, I have to worry about food constantly. I'm very sorry for that. I hope you don't stab people for it. Oh, I stab people constantly. 
but understandable. Also, disclaimer: that is a joke. Just insert a, just insert a clip from fucking Skyrim and Cicero. Let's kill someone. <laughs> there you go. Disclaimer: I have, I have almost never stabbed anyone on purpose. <laughs> Understandable. So, um, Takanuva tells this uh, this local guy, Vastus, he says, hey, we need to go stop that guy bullying the, the smaller guy right now. And then uh, Vastus, who lives in a culture where people used to fight in gladiatorial combat for food, is like, bro, this is how we've done things for 100,000 years. This is our culture on our planet. You know, like, you can't just barge in and start declaring who's a bully and who's not. And Takanuva's mm -hmm. like, bro what are you talking about like this is not the life i've been raised to um like raised to believe in you know and he's uh like just planting more seeds of doubt in his mind i remember uh, this my little pony episode <laughs> hell yeah <laughs> <sighs> um finally over in chapter three um takanuva is meeting with the rest of the the sort of main superhero team the toa nuva um, and they've been sort of downgraded from, you know, um, flashy superheroes into these like kind of beleaguered bureaucrats trying to uh, manage, um, you know, food aid and all this petty politics stuff. And they're Tahu all just kind like, of feels like the the... Tahu kind of feels like the president of Bionicle now. Yeah, he kind of is. handling all the logistics and stuff. Well, mm -hmm. One thing I do want to touch on with Tahu is something that we're going to have a lot of problems with in the future. With oh, yes. Really doing anything with him. Mm -hmm. And that's the fact that he literally, one, Akamai can't exist anymore because he's downgraded mm -hmm. to a Toamata and he's now mm -hmm. incompatible with Pohatu and Onua. And that's two, it. he now has all of the Rakshi powers. Mm -hmm. Do we want to, <laughs> so do we want to explain that? He's ridiculously powerful. I forgot mm -hmm. about that. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's a mess. Do we want to explain that bit? We could go over it briefly. Sure. Um, so, uh, Tahu is uh, the other uh, leading candidate for main character of Bionicle, more or less. Um, Takanuva is the red light. One. He's the red one. Everybody <laughs> remembers the red one. If you, he's if you had, just, he, he's not just the red one. He is the red one in italics. <laughs> Absolutely, he's the one with the big shouty mask. Um, so he's the Toa of Fire. He was uh, the poster child Fire for a lot of the series. Brothers. Yeah. Um, and so to see him brought from this uh, feisty, hothead, you know, uh, punch evil in the face with your fist and your sword simultaneously type of guy to this, like, worn down, you know, uh, flying a desk, um, you know, paperwork kind of guy is uh, is a big change for him. Um, I don't but... think Piper exists yet, but if it did, it, it, there would definitely be paperwork. Yeah, there are yeah, contradictory definitely. accounts about that, but that's a discussion for another time. <laughs> I yeah. like that there. I like the inclusion of a line that he feels like he feels like it, it was only a few days ago that the robots punched each other real real good, <laughs> but. <laughs> It but like it feels like it's been 10 years. <laughs> yeah, <it has. laughs> there are a lot of it has, lines yeah. like that that uh -huh. reference oh, yeah. sort of like the, the amount of time oh, it's yeah. been or oh, yeah. different oh, characters yeah. having different, you know, discussions in the community. Uh, I've got some notes but, about them when they come up. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, but yeah. yes, uh, just jobs in politics do age you. So. Yes, absolutely. Um, so um, going back to the frustrating thing is that um, he used to... Uh, so. Um, he and his team, the the Toa, Toa Nuva, they used to have a certain form. They were called the Toa Mata. Then they got an upgrade, and they got to re-release the toys with fancy silver armor. Hooray. Um, but uh, Tahu, in his role as the poster boy, was chosen by Mata Nui to um, make... <sighs> It's really complicated, but in order to save he the day... He was chosen to commit robot genocide. <laughs> only on only on these evil, mindless reptiles, <laughs> by the way. And to do that, he needed to be downgraded, but also upgraded. Yeah, so they changed his form away from the Nuva form back to the original one for marketing purposes so they could sell him a fourth time. Um, yes, and for, you see, the, because, the, because the original design, design of the shape of his mask was more nostalgic than the, than the Nuva shape of his mask and the mystic shape of his mask. 
Exactly. Yeah, and, and this falls into the same kind of the the way the Bionicle story was always written is like the sets were always designed first, and yeah. then Greg and whoever else had to g- perform wild mental gymnastics to justify, <laughs> to justify it in the story. It, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm not sure why they couldn't have just redesigned that. Why they couldn't have just come up with an explanation that oh, there was always a golden uh, how Nuva that uh, was just happened to be shaped like a regular how. As, especially yeah. since we already established that Kanoe can be any shape that the user wants them to be, yeah. but also but, that is a justification for set design. But, granted, but I still. also, but I also honestly, I liked the idea that Tahu had to sacrifice certain powers to gain the power to win this fight. Yeah. Hmm. Plus, and now he, and now he is more powerful, but in a way that separates him from his friends. So. Yeah. Now he has evil yeah. powers. Yeah, that Plus, is an interesting idea. That could create some like internal conflict and in sort of distancing him from the rest of his team as time yeah. goes on. And yes. apparently, his destiny involved killing a guy because the the Toa Kaita were their own entities. Yeah, and yeah, Akamai, for all intents and purposes, is just dead now. Hmm. Yeah, um, anyway, so that's, if any of this is relevant, he is the president right now. He's got no time <laughs> to think about about combining about about combining with his friends. He's got paperwork and he's got a desk that doesn't exist. Does insert insert a color corrected version of President Quark from Ratchet and Clank with a howl on him. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, so Tahu is now in a very strange form in a very strange line of work. Um, and he discusses with uh, with all of his friends and uh, his mentor, Jiraga Vakama, about how generally awful uh, the, the immediate future looks. Um, and uh, on this happy note, uh, we lead into the rest of Vision of the Great Beings. Indeed. Very nice. Very nice. Yes. Yeah, they had the... Taihu had his little meditation on the roof, and then v- Vakama mm-hmm. came in and was like, hey. Yeah. What a, what a life multiverse. we have. The <laughs> multiverse. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh yeah, oh, yeah that yeah. was um yeah that was um I think it was yeah it was JSL who uh who wrote yeah, the, yeah. Uh, the rest of this. Um, That's right. Yeah. Uh unfortunate that they couldn't be here today. Um but uh as I recall that line right there was supposed to be another um like out of universe fourth wall break about hey guys we, this is just one possible fan fiction. Please don't yeah. let this ruin your fun. If you want to <laughs> if you want to have the entire planet become one giant soccer league Feel free, that's your prerogative. <laughs> uh, this is just our interpretation. A simple yeah, game of Coley. <laughs> a simple game of Coley that yes. involves the whole planet. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I, I did want to mention as well, yeah, because like Sigma, it's all, always glad to have you here as well. Uh, you, James, James and Reese, who were the all the writers of the last two chapters of Light on the Dunes, and one of the original writers for the Powers That Be, did mm-hmm. want to be here, but unfortunately their schedules didn't align. Mm-hmm. And we were also supposed to have Gonol here regularly, who runs the Mass uh, Mist and Legacy site, and mm-hmm. wrote the final versions of many of these stories. But mm-hmm. again, unfortunately, his schedule and my schedule and everyone else's schedule didn't really match up this week. So he will be joining us starting again next recording. Yeah. Schedules are hard. They are. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we have any we have any questions about uh, about light on the dunes? I, I so think I, it was. No, go on, go on. Okay, I was just gonna say I I, I do find it um interesting how it, it you know it, it really does set up the um the sort of more concrete framework for how these different societies are going to struggle to integrate with each other. There's a few lines mm-hmm. in here that um, the sort of, they, they hint towards some characters seeing it as, um, you know, some of the, the native Spherus Magnans seeing mm-hmm. it as, oh, all of these people, all these hundreds of thousands of people from this other place have suddenly moved in and they're encroaching on our land and our place and our, ter- our territory and our culture. Mm-hmm. And um, let, let's just say that that's very... That's very uh, uh, poignant oh, and, cool. and could be mm-hmm. could be applied to a lot of uh, what's going on in the world. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's, it's something that we've all heard in the news. My country. And, yeah. my, do- my country. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I want the sort of overall storyline to sort of tackle that a little bit as much as you can do with children's toy fan fiction. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, sort of, um, if not provide an answer to it, at least kind of analyze why it happens and 
what can or can't be done about it. Yeah, I think it'll yeah. also be it'll be a bit of a difficult thing to to balance in the future, just because of the sheer size of Spherus Magna as a planet, mm -hmm. because it's mm. we we kind of have to keep everyone in the same general area if we want this kind of a story to work. Mm. Yeah, on a scale yeah, of one to ten, on a scale of one to Minecraft, how big is it? Well, it's at least the size of Jupiter, from what I recall. Uh, <laughs> there's there's lots of estimates. Um, most of them are very, very large. Um, as someone with a passing uh, interest in astronomy, I can say a lot of them don't pass, like, actual scientific spot checks. Mm -hmm. um, but there's the old joke that uh, that uh, they paid Greg for his character writing, not for his science writing. So uh. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I, I think it, I forget if it was the Knowledge Tower or somebody else that recently established that the the oceans of Aqua Magna were like thousands upon thousands of <laughs> meters deeper than the Earth's ocean, and just yeah. going down into the pit would be like three times the distance to the Marianas Trench. Goodness <laughs> <laughs> gracious. Yeah, no. Wow. Uh, Greg think... was put himself in the very time-honored tradition of science fiction authors just putting very big numbers just to shock you without really knowing what they mean. Yeah. I, I still stand by the idea that the majority of Bionicle scale and timeline problems could be resolved by just scrubbing a couple of zeros from every oh. one of them. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, it's definitely uh, they very, say that, um, very yeah, it's, you first. magnificent. Yes, the, quite. The size of it. <laughs> yeah, I no. see what you did there. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> It's, uh, yeah, quite, quite magnanimous. Uh, yeah, so, um, it's frequently stated in the lore of the series that, um, that, uh, Mata Nui, the giant robot with all the small robots inside of him, uh, he was out for a hundred thousand years, to the dot. Mm. Um, and mm -hmm. then there were, like, many rises and falls of civilizations and a lot of cultural change and stuff over that time. I think if, uh, like, a more realistic spin on that, I think it could uh, add up to, like, a thousand years. Um, yeah, I think, yeah. like, the amount of change that has taken place is about the same that's happened since 1000 AD. Maybe to, maybe, you know, the year 1 AD. Or CE. Maybe 2000, mm. even. I could yeah, even yeah. I could even live with a, a factor as high as 10,000, but 100,000? Because yeah, if you yeah. consider things like... You know, the, the Matoran Civil War and the Dark Hunter mm. War, things like that. No, known large events in mm. the, the Matoran universe. Mm. They mm. only span like a maximum of like 400 years. Meanwhile, mm. there's just absolutely nothing happening oh, for yeah. the hundreds of thousands yeah, of years yeah. in between. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Matarna Matarna work, Matarna you know? is a very busy place. Yeah, yeah. the Matarna yeah. harder uh, work, and that doesn't make for interesting stories. <laughs> right, I've done uh, I've done a lot of digging into like what does actually happen in this hundred thousand year timeline, um, and so there's a lot of uh, so the story takes place at the very end of the hundred thousand years, um, even the flashbacks, and so um, the, like those final events and the things leading up to them cover sort of the last fifteen thousand. Um, and then there's also a lot of ultra flashback content at the beginning of the hundred thousand thousand years, which covers um, a, a, like loosely, sparsely covers a large chunk of that. However, in the middle there, there is a solid sixty thousand years <laughs> in which literally nothing happens. Like there is not a single event recorded to have taken place in that entire time. It's bizarre. Oh my goodness. <laughs> But hey, it's a World good period to bad. insert well, things. That is true. <laughs> that is true. Games. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, some of you may know me as um, as the uh, currently director for um, the story content of Red Star Games, which is another Bionicle fan project you might have heard of. Um, yeah, uh, feel free to go visit our website, RedStarGames.org. We make a uh, tabletop role playing game. Uh, we make three or four of them actually. I've lost count. Uh, we put out um, uh, Kanohi masks that uh, that are uh, resin printed. You can buy, and we also put out stories um, that uh, unfortunately we couldn't uh, get any ready for this podcast. Um, but we hope you well, like we, reading we, them. We might cover some later. We did discuss it. Mm, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, the main uh, the main bulk of my work is um, making sure that um, the official content we cover um, is accurate, and the unofficial content we make is interesting. 
Um, and it's that second part that leads, led to my contributions over to Myths and Legacy. So, yeah. And if, you, if you're interested in the tabletop RPG, the door and I knew we and want to have a look at some of how it works, every Bionicle Day we host a one-shot campaign at the end of day two, and we've been doing that for the last four years now, I think. Mm-hmm. Oh. And we most recently did a collaboration for with Lightstone and RSG for Rising Shadow Hidden Light, our newest expansion for Quest for the Mass Recharge, that introduced all 42 Rakshi. <laughs> Let's oh, go. Wow. That was a fun and, project. Uh, and, uh, nobody uh, tells yes. for, any, for anybody oh, no, unaware, uh, for, for anybody unaware, Bionicle Day takes place on August 10th. Indeed. Yes, August yes. the 10th every year. Because, it's, we because it's 8 10. Eight, in ten. American, you know, yeah, you know, every you, uh, God, every single year <laughs> without fail, there's always somebody in the comments who's going, eight ten is is it's American, you know, you're not gonna. <laughs> well, I don't want to do it on October eighth. I got shit to do on October eighth. <laughs> plus, yeah. and plus, it was created. You're Canadian. It was the event. Well, okay, I mean, look, even here I we do spread, use... We... I make spreadsheets month before day is the only sensible <laughs> data format. <laughs> well, we do we do use the the other format here in Canada, but... Yeah, well, your, day was... well, your country no, is don't. bad and you should but feel bad. Bionicle no, Day was Turner, originally... I actually feel your country is bad. <laughs> Bionicle Day was originally created by Swart, Spirit, and Dorek, who, uh, uh, Spirit aside, are all American. So it's just what we've stuck with, and it's too late to change it now. <laughs> you can't argue with math. It's just, it, you, just you, 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 you put a bunch of dates in the in the in the columns and then you hit auto sort you put you, the thing in the thing and you put, you, you put the dates in the thing and you hit auto sort and it all works out if the sort if they're if they're american dates but if they're european dates then it doesn't work well the best way to do that is using the asian date system of year month day ah there you yeah, go yeah yeah the, yeah yeah asia get as wrecked. always asia as always better mm -hmm. mm. Anyway, right, well, does anyone have any other comments about Lights on the Dune before uh, uh, we move on to the next story? I like rice. I did have one note. I hmm. really, really liked one of the lines in the first chapter, actually. Um, Ooh. Oh, yeah. Uh, which one would that be? Uh, so right at the end, mm -hmm. the scroll uh speaking to takanuva he's kind of already he's ruined them they're they're done and they're just kind of bitching at him at this point mm. they're, they're whining mm. but he comes in with do you actually know the weak i was one of them once they're stronger than you think if you give them a chance and a cause to believe in and they pop right back with the absolute banger <laughs> and the strong what will you do when they have something to believe in and i think that really sets up the the scroll and all of the minor villain really mm -hmm. as having justified worldviews mm -hmm. as having needs that they're trying to fulfill mm -hmm. as soon it, as they have something to believe in they can come together just like the Matoran just and it like really is fantastic foreshadowing for the conflicts <laughs> to come oh yeah mm -hmm. the, best, the mm -hmm. best villain is the best villain is one that isn't a villain Mm. Mm. Yeah. The real villain just... is the fact that we are living beings who can starve to death. Yeah, the yeah. real yeah. villains are the friends we made along the way. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, but thank you, thank you. I'm I'm really glad you liked that line. Um, I uh, I was uh, I was um, I was uh, proud of it when I wrote it. Um, and if I can uh, if I can you know toot my own horn for a second, um, oh. I think that uh, that kind of represents uh, the the seat of what I'd like to uh, what I'd like this story to portray. Is that um, is that just treating somebody as like a villain, just objectifying them as a villain, is um, not only just not correct in an academic sense, it also mm. makes you less able to understand them in a practical sense. Um, yeah. And that uh, and that if you want to make the world a better place, you actually need to understand and even sympathize with uh, people who are maybe awful people. Um, see what yeah. their needs are and try to understand and work together. If I, wa I wonder if that could be foreshadowing anything involving Takanuva that we have no. planned for the future. No, <laughs> surely not. Surely not. No, also, I, I, I do. I, I definitely agree with that statement. In hmm. in retrospect, with the rest of Bionicle, where Makuda was like, 
you're he he was he's the kind of character who was written to see to seem more complicated than he actually was oh yeah yeah. in reality Mm -hmm. he really like with all respect to greg he did his best but he was still just like a very stereotypical mustache twirling villain oh yeah and i think having more complicated villains in Mm -hmm. the the post reformation storyline is absolutely the way to go Mm -hmm. the best villains are i find are characters that you aren't even sure are villains Mm -hmm. that's that's, 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 domination Mm that thing i said the best villains aren't villains yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. There's going to be some great representation of that when we get to one of the other stories later. Mm-hmm. Indeed. And on that so, note, perhaps we should move on to one of those. Yes. Sure. Yeah. So, so we've got, uh, as I understand it, we've got two options here. Uh, which one is uh, more appealing to us? Well, I, I know read the them. Part- the, I read them in the order that they were presented on the website. Yeah. So the first one, the first one would be Mazika. Yes. Mm. Yeah, that's that's what this... I was planning. The next I was planning the next one to be a uh, little uh, baby punch little baby punches punches <laughs> other little baby real big. <laughs> little baby with PTSD. <laughs> yes, let's not forget that. Mm. Punchy punchy yeah. punchy punchy. Mm. All right. So, so, so um uh would we like uh I'd, I'd be glad to summarize this one. If possible. I already uh, did. Oh. <laughs> you have. <laughs> Well, we could, we should start by mentioning that Mazika is in itself a direct sequel to Brothers in Arms, which we did read in the first mm. season of Gathered Friends, and mm. it was listed as optional reading, but I'm pretty sure we are generally familiar with that one, but we could go over very briefly what that one was about first to set this one up. Yeah, there was there once was a little Matoran named Mazika. Um, <laughs> he was friends with a little red man who was also Matoran. <laughs> Uh, you know, one of them kind of turned into a kind of just a general meanie, you know, if we were to put it politely. He got real angry and mean, huh? Yeah, Yeah, the color of his eyes started uh, killing serial. Yeah, yeah, he started killing cereal, he started killing oranges, he started killing or he started killing all the all the breakfast food. Yeah, so he started killing in series, uh, Mazga gets recruited into the Order of Matanui, which is a secret religious order, sort of, for the, the Great Spirit. Essentially, yeah. yeah, that's, you know, that's the best, that's a great analogy mm-hmm. there, honestly. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Liam already, Liam had was said it before I did. Oh, probably uh, at some early, point. On an earlier yeah. episode. I don't know, we've been doing this forever. It's yeah. been five whole years. <laughs> well, little, time, isn't re- time isn't real to me. I've been uh, I've been alive since the dawn of reality. Oh dear, that's quite a while. But but yeah, then this is little red red friend who killed in series became a shadow Matoran, which is sort of like corrupted Matoran by the Makuta. And the gist of the story is that they're kind of hunting each other down. They eventually end up in a parallel universe where just everything turned out better, you know, which is, yeah. that's, yeah. there's always Tragic. one of those, eh? It's never our, yeah. our world. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, a bit, it's, a bit, it's a little bit more unique than a mirror universe. It's, it's quite literally inverted. The, oh, don't worry, true. they did that too. That they did yep. a lot of parallel universes in 2008. I don't oh, yeah, know what yeah. was going on there. <laughs> they did, yeah. yeah, they did straight up mirror universes, but this one is a mirror universe where everything turned out better, and also it's literally everything's flipped. the The big boys, the big boys are the babies, and the little yeah. ones are the heroes. <laughs> yeah. Toa Maku Matoran Helrix. <laughs> and they they look exactly like they do. In in the prime the universe. universe, it's just like mm-hmm. the titles yeah. that are switched. And yeah. do they have do they have elemental powers in this universe? They have power. Yeah. The, the Toa have powers. They just yeah. Don't, they're, they're just, just they're just yeah. small. They're just the Matoran yeah. physically. <laughs> this world is this world has known peace for a long time, and there's no reason for them to use their powers. That's mm-hmm. true. They probably use them off screen after the end of this chapter. Mm-hmm. And, and the, so, the, the so main the... sort of dividing factor of this universe is that all of the Makuta d- decided to get really into meditation. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, they just never, they just never, they were always in meditation and then they turned evil and then they weren't. Hmm. Except here they didn't. They were just always this good. They were always good guys. 
They never turned evil. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so Mazika through um, some shenanigans, he, he does wind up in this universe where everything's turned upside down. Um, and um, sort of that's kind of the, uh, the trap that he uses to, uh, to finally get rid of his, uh, his arch nemesis, whose name is Voltraz, um, where he's yeah. kind of quartered them in this alternate reality. And then he says, OK, you guys can have them. All right, bye. Um, yeah, but then... yeah, the great geeks are curious how a Matoran could turn evil. Mm -hmm. But then uh, they're like, wait, take one of our Makuta with you mm -hmm. as no, an no, exchange. They, they, no, they, they, they offer him a choice. Let us keep this guy so we can disassemble him and see, mm -hmm. and see what makes him tick. Mm -hmm. And you can, ah, take, yes. you can take any one of our guys. They, mm -hmm. even, offer, they even offer Mazika they can, that he can take a great being with them. Yeah, but what does for he whatever do? reason, for whatever reason, he picks. He he decides to take Teradax instead. I think out of pure yeah. spite at first. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is just like I don't like you. You're coming with me. <laughs> uh, like like Teradax is awesome. Uh, a great being could be such should could have been such a great opportunity to learn about the fabric of reality. I guess, but who but, cares? Uh, I, I love I love like Teradax. Yeah. He's a good boy. And he's yeah, got a big a, hammer. He swings yeah. big hammer. <laughs> and we certainly get a lot more of him in in this story, too. Yes. Yep. And it turns and uh, he and Mizika get talking throughout the throughout the chap ongoing chapters, and it turns out they have a lot in common. Ooh. Mm. Yeah. Too much. Gas. Mm. Cute, hot, steamy Too romance. Much. <laughs> <laughs> so um so one thing about Mizika as a character that uh, that really intrigued me. Is that um, is that he is a Matoran who are the, the small uh, you know uh, work village people who are constantly that in need means... of saving, um, and yet um, he decides that he is going to be the one doing the saving, um, not because not a, uh, just out of like you know a shortage of heroes, which is you know factually the case, but also because he is personally disillusioned with their kind of heroism. He thinks that being a good boy all the time. Um, is just going to get you killed because, well, that is factually what happened. So he says, uh, you know, screw it. Um, if the bad guys get to uh, murder, well, then I will too. Um, and then he asks the Order of Mata Nui, who are the shadow CIA. He's like, hey, teach me how to be a murderer, and I'll only murder bad people, and this will end <laughs> well for everyone. <laughs> Um, so, uh, Light Teradex, uh, who he yoinked from the alternate dimension, has a kind of a similar, uh, similar ideal, where, um, he is all, like, uh, honorable and, uh, and, like, uh, honest and, and stuff, um, but, uh, but he puts the greater good ahead of, uh, petty things like not smashing people with a hammer. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. so they kind of, uh, they kind of share this. Um, although, uh, Teradax has, um, has, uh, even in his evil form, he's always had a knack for kind of understanding what people aren't saying about themselves. And he's like, Hey buddy, I think you're a little messed up. Uh, you know, not many of your kind run around stabbing people. What's up with you? Um, and that kind of dynamic of like, um, you know, why is this small boy messed up is what we take into the story, Mazeka which focuses on the character Mazika's evolution of his thoughts. Mm. And one note I just, just want to add before we get like right into it is we, we've we've had a lot of discussions in the 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 lore parts of the server for Miss and Legacy mm -hmm. about Matoran culture further away from Metru Nui. Mm -hmm. And I think Mazika is a good example of how Matoran that are furthest from the cultural heart of the universe can very easily get disillusioned with Mata Nui or the Toa or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Hates the Toa. He finds out he, he, uh, his first mission with the Illuminati is to rescue, is to keep a Matoran that's destined to become a Toa from getting kidnapped by the brother, the brotherhood of Makuta. Mm. Uh, and like when he finds the Toa stone that's supposed to, turn this kid, this his friend who at this point he's friends with into a toa he's like i'm going to protect him from his fate because i think being a toa sucks mm -hmm. so i'm going to not give him the toa stone mm -hmm. and then eventually he's like oh my friend uh believes in the toa in the toa code and and doesn't want to kill bad guys 
I guess I guess I have no choice but to give him the, the dumb the dumb stupid MacGuffin. Here, here, take the stinking the stinking Toa MacGuffin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, and all of this part is told through a um told through a flashback. This story it flashes back and forward between the present mm -hmm. day and however many years ago this was, like ten years ago, I think, or five years, something like that. Or ten thousand years four, ago, four years. Or ten million, <laughs> four ten years, million years ago. Are you sure and, it's uh, not a hundred million billion years ago? <laughs> we are, we are not Frank's sure. Frank's numbers, it could very well be. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're gonna. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna hold my hand, my finger on the zero key until someone tells me to, to stop. <laughs> Greg will not give you an answer. He will not tell you to stop. He'll just keep it, going. It's like it's like when you're that joke when you're in like an Italian restaurant and the waiter comes up with the fucking parmesan and they're <laughs> like, <laughs> "How much? Tell say when." And Greg's just it's like zero is coming out of the parmesan thing. <laughs> and Greg's face on the guy. He's, he never says when, and it just fills up the whole restaurant with zero. <laughs> I know that was the reason I bought a I bought a shaker of Parmesan uh, last week. <laughs> mm -hmm. Anyway, so so the, these flashbacks are triggered by Lightside Pterodax asking Mazika, "When was the last time? When was the first time you took a life?" Mm -hmm. And this sort of triggers uh, Mazika's memories of uh, of this mission. You're like, mm -hmm. "Come on, guy, you're a stabby boy, aren't you?" <laughs> mm -hmm. And then he reveals that, like, he has only, I, I think is that he had only killed that, uh, that one, uh, Shadow Mator in, in, the, in that mission to protect Kirkua. Mm. Except no, because it turns out that the, that the Shadow Matoran that he thought he had killed, mm. he actually let live. And it turns out was vitally important to Shadow Matoran finding out how to be cured. Yes. Yeah. Mm. I also yeah. want to point out the, a very striking visual in this chapter is the the Valmai Falls. Mm. I absolutely yes. love that. Oh, and yes. and I would, thing, yeah. I would love to see somebody draw that. I just I pick I always picture oh, that yeah. in my mind is like the falls taking up like the majority of the shot, and then you just see like a tiny little swamp strider in the lower corner just dwarfed by this massive waterfall yeah i i sort of Isn't pictured it, it as like a, a sort of like massive crater almost like mm. uh, maybe sort of like the grand canyon but like bigger mm -hmm. right but and there's then, an excellent you know, just, oh sorry it's all right, it's all right and then mm. there's you know just the giant like cascade of water coming from the heavens yeah you know into mm. into this giant giant crater where you know like a whole island used to be yeah, mm -hmm. I, I love the way that the water is described as um, as like glass, like it, it's cascading down so cleanly and smoothly, like you can't you couldn't even see it moving unless until you get close. Mm -hmm. There's another mm -hmm. piece of description for the water that I really enjoyed. It it describes the water as capturing the moonlight almost as though it's caught in glass and mm, <laughs> beautiful. Yeah, oh, beautiful. Love that. Yeah, I think the imagery mm -hmm. in this in this uh, serial was. Pretty great. I, I, I liked it a lot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it, yeah. it's, it is very visual in nature. It's one of the... like that. I, I always have a lot of problems visualizing things in my mind. I'm just, I don't mm. have that mm. kind of mental wiring. But like this Greg. story in particular made that very easy to do. You I just thought about... I just thought apple. of... I just, <laughs> I, just, uh, I just envisioned Niagara Falls when I was reading this. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> uh, I suppose we should mention that this story and uh, much of what we read today, um, what read for today, was written by Jeff Douglas. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Yes. Ah. Mm -hmm. Good old Jeff. Jeff yes, Jeff. Jeff. gotta love him. 30 feet tall and wearing several hats. Yes, he uh, <laughs> actually, um, when uh, when Chuck Norris jumps into a pool, the pool actually gets Jeff Douglas, uh, not Chuck <laughs> Norris. Um, <laughs> so anyways... <sighs> Uh, where are we? Um, yeah, so in the story no, I, of... Uh, sorry, I, I'm just imagining Chuck, Chuck Norris jumps into a pool and the pool just turns into Jeff Douglas. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, there you go. <laughs> yeah, so um, over the course of the story, um, so we've gone over what is the flashback of where uh, of where Mazika um, tried to kill a dude. Um, then in the uh, in the present, um, he and uh, Light Pterodax are hunting down the last of Shadow Takanuvas. Now, um, over the course of the same story, um, so uh, in a completely unrelated incident, 
um, you know, to the good version of the bad guy. Uh, the story also introduced, like, hundreds of bad versions of Takanuva, who, as we mentioned before, is one of the main good guys. Um, so yeah. they, they pulled some uh, comic book alternate universe shenanigans where, you know, um, they, the, the Makuda just plucked him out of an alternate universe, slapped him with a Shadow no, Leech, that's actually the what Makuda, they're called. The, the one of the Makuda that wore the mask of Dimensional Gates was like, yes. hey, what if, hey, what if I go to every universe, kidnap the Toa of Light, the one Toa of Light that every universe has, turn them evil, and that that this is redundant because any to any any being you corrupt becomes a being of shadow. So I don't know why, th other than shock value, they don't know why they need to talk to Nova specifically. But whatever. Yeah, exactly. Like they could have just walked into like any arena on stealth and been like, "Who wants to kill people?" and then thrown a shadow leech at him, and it would have been <laughs> exactly the same. But I I I do kind of uh, applaud Greg because like good version of bad guy, bad version of good guy. There's a lot of possibilities there. I respect yeah. that. And that yeah, is also, so... it, it's extremely ballsy of Tree Dex oh, yeah. to oh, go yeah. to grab not one, but dozens of Takanuvas, mm -hmm. only uh, one of which was required to defeat their their leader in a mm -hmm. very, like, like, Teradax did not take him seriously. Mm -hmm. Oh, I Perhaps... imagine there was hundreds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Per Perhaps so... if a Toe of Light is turned into a Toe of Shadow, perhaps they're, like, they they're more hypothetically more powerful than like anyone extra else. Extra strong yeah, could be. Yeah, could be. extra yeah. shadows maybe. Yeah. 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 Can um, I just say so how I I still absolutely I hate that one of the Makuta is named Tridax and another mm -hmm. one is named Teradax. Yep. Yep. Can we yep. not I do was that, please? I'm getting confused by that. That is <laughs> why. Yeah. Genuinely, yeah. I've never, I've never really thought about that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like having it's, one uh, called yeah. Jeff and the other called Jeff, but with a G E O. <laughs> <laughs> hey, in real Pretty life, th in real life, those are names. <laughs> it's so, like in real life, you have one person named Jeff, named Jeff, and another named Jeff, and another named Jeff, <laughs> and there's an army of people named Jeff, and there's so welcome many to gather named Jeff. Jeffs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My name is Jeff. Sweet and Dave and hella Jeff. I hella. called you about the stairs, bro. <laughs> so, uh, speaking of stairs, um, they actually do get on the only motorcycle in the universe and crash I down a flight this. of stairs in the story. I, I love this cycle. chapter. Yeah, oh, it was so it was silly. All kinds of fun. Oh, yeah. It was, I so, told you um, about the stairs, bro. <laughs> it so was, they it break was really in, nice uh, to... It was really nice to finally have the Destral cycle like used in anything. Oh yeah, oh yeah. A lot of, I a lot of. Um... I especially love how like Teradax is characterized as sort of like an all-knowing kind of character, or at least very wise for what he is. Mm -hmm. The moment he gets on this motorcycle, he's oh, just yeah. like, hmm, I wonder if I smack the console with my fist if it'll work. <laughs> <laughs> But it does. It does. And then yeah. it's, yeah. it's and like then, that so, scene. It's like, like that no. scene from Shadow the Hedgehog, where like <laughs> the, they're all the, the the chaotics are trying to hack into the computer, and then Shadow just walks in and karate chops the keyboard, <laughs> and it works. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I love it. He he, he punches. He punches the console of this thing. It's it starts revving up, and then for the entire rest of the motorbike ride, neither one of them say a single word. They just <laughs> randomly crash this thing down the stairs. Yeah. Don't mention it again, so and carry on. Hey, Jimmy, play that one about falling down the stairs. Sure thing. <laughs> the destral cycle, like tumbling down the stairs. There you go. I love how when they get to the bottom as well, it describes them both as landing with like a modicum of dignity, just about. <laughs> <laughs> like they're only just looking cool there. Superhero <laughs> poses. Oh yeah, and then the, but then it kind of falls through a bit. Cycle explodes in the background. <laughs> Which they don't look at, of course. Uh, I was, <laughs> for for oh, most of, for uh, through this entire sequence, I'm expecting like if this is ever animated, there has to be an Akira slide somewhere. Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I also oh, yeah. like how this sort of adds to like the tr sort of tradition in Bionicle where there's a cool vehicle that le at least there was like a physical set model made of. Mm. That very yeah. quickly kind of gets destroyed. <laughs> 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 oh yeah, or, 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 at, least, or at least, or at least with long. like the Usanui with Takanuva. Oh back yeah, in. Th this is totally a parallel mm -hmm. to that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there you go. I hadn't thought of that. Oh, that's cool. 
Yeah. Yeah. You, you've got the light elemental guy and the little mm-hmm. baby who may or may not be dead, depending on the story. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, uh, well, Holly was in the Yosunui, uh, but anyways. Oh, that's true. Um, so the reason why um, our two brave heroes have decided to uh, motorcycle crash down a staircase uh, is because they are hunting down the Shadow Takanuvas. Um, they uh, they know that these are some nefarious dudes, and as two guys who have decided they're going to stab all the nefarious dudes, why, they're there to do the stabbing. Um, but at this point, uh, Mazika has had enough um, wisdom... And, you know, second thoughts stuck into his brain that he's kind of reconsidering the whole murder thing. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, d- uh, during this, um, you know, um, the Shadow Takanuva start coming out. One of them becomes the ringleader and Teradax just starts going to town. Like he's flattening them like pancakes. He's dragging out all his powers to like fling them against the wall. He's, uh, like, I, did, I did also find it funny. Mm-hmm. But a little bit cheesy when Takanuva started like spouting off quotes from the yeah. movie, but mm-hmm. in like dark, edgy versions of the quotes. A simple mm-hmm. game of Coley. <laughs> you can I no am... longer hide in the light. I you wake just... one, you wake them all. I, oh, yeah. I I choose to believe that all I choose to believe that Shadow Takanuva is is only acts like Shadow the Hedgehog all the time. <laughs> there you go, there you go. Um, so, Shadow, Tark- well, this Shadow is... Takanuva will only ever act like sh- like sh- Shadow the Hedgehog at all times. Mm. Where's that damn sixth Toa Stone? Oh, <laughs> this is who swear, I am. That's a swear word. Into the jar it goes. <laughs> ah, that doesn't count. I am all of me. Yeah, so, um, so while, uh, while Teradax is going to town, Mazika suddenly has this revelation. He's like, wait, um... Killing people is wrong! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, uh, he realizes that the one that he let go actually went on to prove, like, incredibly crucial in saving the universe. And he's like, hey, the, maybe yeah. we, as regular guys, don't have the authority to just be judge, jury, and executioner and decide who we can murder, you know with the limited context we have as non yeah, omniscient beings. Yeah, only Paradox's beings. bosses can do that. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, you know, maybe it's not up to us to decide who lives and who dies. And then Paradox Maybe the Toa like, were, had, were cool after all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, he, does a, he does a flip. He realizes why they do it. It's not because they're not capable of it. It's not because they just don't feel like it. It's because, you know, like, it actually is supposed to serve a greater purpose, you know, like, practically speaking, and the uh, the greater whole of things, and he comes to yeah. that realization. Yeah. And so um, now, instead of st- instead of systematically stabbing each and every one of these Takanuvas in their sleep, mm-hmm. they're gonna they're gonna cure them and send them home. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then all of these and ultimate I'm universes. Krak- and it turns out that Mazika's old friend Krakua, the Toa of Sa- who is now a Toa of Sound, mm-hmm. is important to that because the thing yeah. that cures shadow poisoning. Is the sound of a Rahi screaming. And yeah. apparently Krakua can modulate his voice to sound like one. I love yeah. that a little bit. It's well, silly, but heck? I love it. Well, yeah. What In the most heck else would a Toa of Sound be able to do? What the heck else would a Toa of Sound be able to do? <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In most fantasy worlds, it would be like, oh, the mystical water of the golden tree will heal the cure the darkness. Or, you know, like... No, it's a bat you know, screaming. Oh, yeah, no, they, they, uh, what, what Greg did was that, um, it's this, this one random bat that lives on one island is just so loud that he make, that it makes, uh, evil people stop thinking about being evil so that yeah. they can turn good again. Yeah, and it's, it's not just one about just like me, for real. Yeah, yeah, it's, not yeah. Ju- it's not just about volume, though, it's also about frequency. That's true, that's yeah, true. Yeah, it's about, that, uh, they needed Krakua specifically. Because mm-hmm. Matoran of Sound do not like Toa because they are noisy and they have now, sensitive hearing for their precious little ears. Now, now yeah, I'm just thinking of another. Now I'm just thinking of another visual gag where it's just you want to hear the most annoying sound in the world, and it's just a <laughs> clack and a shadow mm-hmm. Matoran. <laughs> yeah, a tuxy clack scream, curing the shadow Matorans. It seemed a little odd mm. at first, but I, mm. I've seen mm. similar concepts in other things where. Oh, this bug, this evil bug just doesn't like this particular frequency. Let's just blast everything with frequency. And mm-hmm. I can kind of see it as the shadow leeches being driven from them. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. But, yeah, um, it's, it has. 
Greg has I'm... explained it that um that like what the what the shadow leeches do to a shadow matoran initially is um they uh they shut off their natural regeneration of there's an actual energy in all thinking beings in the bionicle universe where there is moral light energy and moral shadow energy and in most right. beings these exist in balance and some people can cultivate an imbalance um but what the shadow leeches do is they put a barrier uh, they sort of seal off that being's natural light regeneration, so they then the shadow just takes over. Yeah, yeah, basically. <laughs> I see. Um, okay. And so uh, what the frequency does is it somehow uh, breaks that uh, that seal on their light chakra, which allows them to just suddenly get their empathy back out of nowhere. Yeah. I, I think uh, you yeah, can imagine the bat, the, bat sort of just, like... the bat just screams yoga at them. <laughs> yeah. I, I think you could imagine it as sort of like dissolving it like the specific fre yeah. frequency because i imagine mm. the clack is not just like because frequencies like you can have them layered right mm -hmm. so it's, I was just thinking so i imagine about it's, it, like, it's like really like, unique mm. to them uh, mm. you know i was just thinking about it like star trek sonic showers mm. in, star <laughs> in star trek they don't have sh they don't have uh shower shower nozzles that spray water at you they have Sonic showers that emit uh, a, vo a volume that you can't hear, but that makes you clean. Oh dear. Vibrate. Mm -hmm. We're back to vibrating. Everything yeah, vibrates. falls by, by, vibration, yep. by vibrating real fast. Get yep. put in the, the wiggler. Yep. Yep. You get put in the yep. wiggler. <laughs> Let's get I, you I want, I want and get Sonic, put in the pear wiggler. I want Sonic <laughs> showers to be real because then I don't have to constantly buy more towels every time my toilet overflows. Can I stop? <laughs> not, should I, I not have mentioned my toilet? But, okay, I'm, gonna I'm okay. sorry. I, I can't now stop imagining Karzani just like chucking Batoran <laughs> into the pear wiggler. <laughs> <laughs> The pear wiggler d is just is just a box that that emits clack screams. There you go. Oh no, another swear jar. No. Wait, what did I say? I did. I oh, said you the did? morphy word. Oh, oh dear. Into the jar it goes. I wish I had a glass jar. For do this. not put. Do Into not the put, jar with me as well. Do not put Levi in the My Little Pony come jar. Oh no! Oh, no. <laughs> I'm just gonna. Okay. Right, uh, no, I take it back. I didn't say the naughty word. Liam said the naughty. Yeah. But yes. Where where were uh, we with the with with the story again? Wait, yeah. We... Um. So uh, Mazika finally realizes that killing people is bad. Um. Yeah. And then uh, at that moment, the the uh, the real Takanuva or the Takanuva for the main story universe, who has not been Takanuva Prime. The yeah. Golden he, Man. Uh, he shows up uh, along with Kukua at that moment. And they're like, hey, now that we're not going to kill these guys, why don't we turn them good again and send them back to their respective universes? Uh, immeasurably improving all of these universes, you know, um, you know, in a very practical sense. Whereas, uh, I, except for the ones that are already dead. Yeah, they're, I was going to say, they're, like, they're, they're, they're messed up. There yeah, were yeah. so many of them that were just absolutely pulverized by that point. And mm. I love how the Soria specifically addresses this by saying, like, yeah, we returned the bodies, too. So yeah. I'm just imagining, like, a bunch of Matoran <laughs> going about their day in their home universe. And then the mangled corpse of Takanuva just drops out of a portal out of the yeah. sky. I was, I was thinking about that village. as well, yeah. I was like, I would, that's I kind would of almost morbid. want to explore that timeline. That's almost interesting. <laughs> enough that i'd want to think about that but <laughs> anyways uh, um yeah. yeah so uh Masika has his little thing um so then at the very end uh they hear actually hear an update from the great beings of the alternate universe that he went to um where uh hey, it's your boy Voltra... here you go yeah yeah where uh voltraz has also like progress has been made on voltraz they've figured out what a shadow motoran is and they're working on de shadow motoraning him which i mean i guess just give him the clack scream um but yeah and no they're um, work they're working on why they turn evil to why they are capable of turning evil to begin with that's mm -hmm. right that's right yeah I, I also want to point out that during this whole exchange takanu prime takanuva is having like an unheard con from the audience perspective conversation with like teradax mm -hmm. and i think there there's a lot of potential in exploring what exactly they were talking about in future yes. stories involving Takanuva and his moral dilemmas. Yes. Yeah. I want to know, Takanuva I know what, smiled from their I want to know what the melding is equivalent to the to the Coley to the Coley match 
uh, was. Mm. <laughs> yeah. That's like, a, did, yeah. Did, 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 Taku, did Toa Takua play a, a dramatic Coley match with Light Teradax for no reason? <laughs> <laughs> we Question may mark? never know. <clears throat> Yeah. Uh, I just want to mention real quick, actually, um, going back to the uh, back to the fight scene between mm. uh, Light Teradax and the Shadow Attack Nova. Uh, at one point, they do Nova blasts at each other, and I'm just thinking, like, how in the hell is Mazika surviving this? He's right there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, that... I mean, so it's Nova blasts originated. Like... Yeah, Nova Sorry, blasts originated in the uh, in the PS2 game where they were um, just a way to sort of clear out the like the five foot radius around you. Um, yeah. It was just a thing that the game designers kind of made up. And then Greg was like, ah, yes, this is a thermonuclear bomb. <laughs> <laughs> and they've those two visions of what a Nova Blast is have just never been resolved. Um, it, it's the same kind of thing with, like, what, what are they called? Gravity charges or something in, in Star mm. Wars when mm. um, Obi-Wan was chasing Jango Fett. And seismic then fast charges, forward yeah. to yeah seismic charges, and then you fast forward to the Disney canon where they just like get these to use on horseback or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah, no, sorry, no, that wasn't it. No, it was in the P the the PS two Attack of the Clones game. That's right, mm. where yeah. they have seismic charges on the back of these dinosaur creatures on Kashyyyk, and they're just using them casually in battle. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. The Nova Blast gets worse because it isn't Takanuva supposed to be more powerful than other Toa? And isn't the Shadow Takanuva supposed to be slightly more powerful than even that? Well also so, I, I think, think what I think what Teradex was doing was he was canceling out Takanuva's yeah, Nova exactly. Blast with yeah, his own light powers. It. Mm. Yeah. 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 So they're just hurling it, nukes so they're just hurling nukes at each other and disarming nukes in midair and just, just well, it seems to me because it describes it as this massive pillar of hmm. light and shadow energy. It seems to me that rather than the explosion, they go out and they, they ruin everything for miles around. He's he's sort of channeled it upwards and out, away mm. from yeah. the rest it, of the people it, it around. It reminds me of that one slow-mo guys episode where they're, they're trying to stop a bullet with a C4 explosion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I well, think... And, I think maybe well, also if there were no ca if there were no casualties, if it says there are no casualties, then I guess there were no casualties. Yep. <laughs> I think I think also well. what could be the case is that different elements could have like d deadlier Nova Blasts, mm -hmm. or like you know like the danger of Nova Blast could vary depending on the element. That like, is very yeah. true. Yeah. Like you know, and I, I I also quite like <clears throat> how these stories interweave with each other. That's one thing mm -hmm. I have in my notes is like. The end, uh, the, one of the things we didn't really touch on at the end of Light on the Dunes was Takanuva mentioning like, oh yes, I have a mission to go on, but I need a toe of sound for it. Know any good, mm -hmm. any good guys out there? And now at the end of Mazika, <laughs> yes, we, we see what that was exactly leading up to. Exactly one guy. <laughs> exactly <laughs> one guy ever. Yeah. I want to see what a Nova Blast looks like from a Toa of the Green. Behold, <laughs> plant. <laughs> Behold, I, life. I want a conversation between Vakama and Krakua. I want to know what that. I want to. I want to. I want. Ooh. I want that. All right. Yeah. I want to know. I, I want to know if. I want to know how much Krakua knows about about the vision that that was beamed into Vakama's head. Yes. Well, he, he was, was the one who. He. Well, we, we, we'll get to that. Don't worry. We, okay. We'll be getting to that later For on sure. once that story is written. I think mm. we should do. Um, the yesterday quest next, just because of should how be. um, powers that be ends. I think that would kind of yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree with that. Yeah. Be better. All right, that's, that's fair enough. That's a good idea. Yes, let's right. take it. It's up to something that I just want. I, I'm trying to do the Beatles song yesterday, but I don't remember the lyrics, and I don't know if the station has the rights to that. So it's probably mm. best for the best. So I, I think the the best way to start would be a very brief summary of the chapters that were finished originally in canon and mm -hmm. then we just go further into detail with the continuation mm -hmm. the pseudo canon as mm -hmm. i put it yeah. <laughs> so uh for the for the uh chapters that greg wrote um so uh these two groups of people they're now on the new planet um however uh the great beings uh who are these group of uh like supernaturally powerful scientists that built basically everything important in the story 
um, they have been in hiding, or, well, the, nobody knows where they are. Um, and so um, the, the Toa Nuva, again, uh, they pick um, these just random four assholes, really. There's uh, only one of them had existed prior to the story. And they said, uh, just, just, just go find them. You know, we don't know where they are, but, you know, and there's, you know, a planet the size of Jupiter, but just, just go find them. Where, where, where should we start to look? I sleep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so that's basically where we are. Um, so we have four characters. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, we have Gelu, who is a Glatorian of ice. Um, so Glatorian don't have elemental powers. He's just a guy who wears a snowflake costume and can fight good. And he's running he, uh, the daycare he... for these other guys. Yes, yes. He, he is he the most mature one. He complains um, a couple of times throughout the story uh, that uh, while Matanui was handing out elemental powers to Glatorian, he d somehow didn't get... Didn't get <laughs> yeah, yeah. Home. He somehow, Nobody like, asked. in the story where they, they are just handing out elemental powers like candy, he remains one of the few ju just guys. Yeah. But anyways, um, so there's three He's other assholes cool accompanying guy. him on his journey. Um, oh. So there is Toa Zarya, Toa of Iron. Um, he can control metal. He's kind of very serious down to earth. And he has a mysterious past because there's a rumor that he <gasps> killed someone, which is a big no-no, as we remember from Mazika. Um, Zarya, that kills people, Zarya. <laughs> also, um, I think person... he's I think he is the or one of the last Toa of Iron since yes. the persecution of yeah. his entire race by the Brotherhood of Akuda. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he um... he he, uh, he broods about that pretty much pretty much throughout the story. Uh, yes, is like. The 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 Brotherhood of Makuta were terrified of having the, of having just Toa, whose whole deal was being able to shred our armor into pieces. So just slaughter all Toa of Iron. Keep keep a tight leash on all Matoran of Iron. Just uh being just being a, a Matoran of Iron was not fun. And he's the last, he's like the only Toa of Iron, and there are, there are not many Toa of anything. Mm. And mm. like, uh, well, he's about to find out that the the spe the native species of the of the, this planet and its components uh, but... also had some shenanigans with their Iron tribe. Yes, mm. and we will get to that very shortly. Yeah. Uh, very shortly indeed. Um, next up in our cavalcade of uh, weirdos, uh, we have Kiara, who is uh, our um, upbeat, snarky uh, Toa of Lightning. Um, I love her. her. Yeah. Um, she's she's wonderful. She's one of the best. Um, she so loves deal... to step on bugs. She loves yes. to fry lizards. I, yeah. I yeah. Want to, I, want, I, want uh, step on me. I want her to step on me. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, fish fear her, lizards fear her, women fear her. Uh, she's just a very ornery person all around. Um, her deal <laughs> is that um, she is she's kind of new with this whole hero thing, but not very new because uh, she had a solo career fighting the Vizarak, who um, so, who you might remember from the 2005 story. Um, and this is kind of her first time working with people. Um, so yep. she has to learn the virtues of unity and all that. And then finally she we have... Uh, most oh. certainly younger than the other to Toma. Yes. yes. I'm not I'm not I'm not clear who the, I'm not clear how old the iron guy is, but uh yeah. this third guy, he's one yes. of the oldest guys there is. Yes, he is possibly like in the single digits for how old any of the robot characters are at least. That um, that reminds me of another note that I wanted to bring up actually for um hmm. for Mazika, but it's also relevant to to um Orde as well potentially hmm. is hmm. that the the design of Krakua's armor is specifically pointed out mm -hmm. when he transforms into a Toa mm -hmm. as being very similar to Helric's. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really think about it that much when the canon contests were going on, mm -hmm. but the winning design of Helric's is actually pretty close to Krakua in design. So I mm -hmm. think Perfect. that that kind of thing may have actually been taken into account, which is really yes. nice. And I, I think the same could probably be said of Orde. Yeah, no, it okay. uh, it absolutely was. It's a popular fan theory that the original anyway. Toa looks really scrunkly and technicky. Mm. Enough <laughs> beating around the bush. Orde is one of the first Toa. Yes, one uh, of the first Toa, literally the first Toa of psionics, the yes. element of brain thinky thought thought pattern thinky a mental brain. mangle. Yes, and he's the only 
and he's the only Toa of Psionics that's cisgender. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. You could Every say that. Every single one of them is trans. Get ready yeah. for the woke agenda. <laughs> so, uh, so his trauma is that um, so they made a Toa of Brain stuff, and then they were like, hey, uh, we messed up. We made an entire species of permanently angry lizard people. Um, can you go into their brains and calm them down? And he was like, sure. Um, he messed up and he made them even worse. And so the great beings uh, who had invented uh, interplanetary robots but had not invented not being sexist uh, were like, okay, uh, you are too angry. You're too so aggressive. we will. Uh, so uh, when we try this whole brain toa thing in the future, we'll make them all women. Um, yeah. And so that's what they did. Yeah. Um, and he explained but... all this to Chiara, to Chiara and and the, the other Chiara one. Chiara a lizard. Yeah, yes. Chiara fried a lizard because she was like. Wow. Boom. I'm so gentle. I'm so gentle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was, it, was, it was a good scene. Um, yeah. So, yeah, later, so his damage later, is... Later that... it would turn out, later it would turn out that the great beings always just decided that they always were just going to make... They'd always planned to make the rest of the psionics robots female and just let Orde, Orde believe that it was uh, his fault. What, what, uh, hey, 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 guys, wouldn't it be really funny if we made this one a man and gave him an existential crisis for 100,000 years? <laughs> didn't explain anything. Because that's what you want, because that's what you want when you want to, when you give, you give someone psychic powers is you want to purposely fu screw around with them. I almost said the swear <laughs> word. I almost did it. I almost did it. Did you see? Did you see, Daddy? I caught well, it. Then you you can you almost, you can almost put a coin in the swear jar. Oh, sh oh, uh, okay. I'm gonna balance two because I almost said the S word just now. You know, <laughs> try to balance them on the lid of the jar. And anyway, yeah. So moving on, they're heading towards the North Pole for some reason because they just assume that the they just assume that the gods are gonna live up there. Well, that's yeah, where yeah, Santa Claus really. lives, and he's basically a god. I think. Yeah. It's, I think it's he's also Santa because... Claus, also known as Sorel. Uh, yeah, I think it's also because that's like the one part of the planet that hasn't been like ups uh, like explored by the main society that mm. is kind of like reformed because because oh, you got you Aquamagna, know what, right? Would, you know what? That makes sense. Yeah, because yeah, you got Aquamagna, Aquamagna, which is covered yeah. by the, the Torn universe, and then Aquamagna Magna, had nothing else. on it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. they, they can just ask all the people from Barra Magna, uh, whereas they, I don't think they've really formally established contact with the people on Boda Magna, so uh, the, the whole expedition is serving kind of two purposes there. What if yeah, it turns that, yeah, out? What if yeah. it turns out that? What if it turns out that uh, after this whole story that where they asked a whole bunch of people from Boda Magna, hey, have you seen the Great Beings? No, have you checked over there? No, have you checked over there? It That's turns basically out that, how the story goes. It, yeah. What if it would turns out that if they just have that if they just ask like a random Glatorian uh from some the opposite side of the planet from where they checked, it mm. was like, Oh yeah, the great beings, they're over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um so uh so they head over, yeah. Uh they know they're not on Aqua Magna because um unless they have a fancy underwater city, they know they're not on Bara Magna because they asked. So they go on to Boda Magna, which is um the part of the planet that contains the jungle and the North Pole. Hooray! And the dinosaurs. And the dinosaurs. <laughs> um yes, because everybody da, 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 knows you can't have a jungle da, da, without dinosaurs. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Understandable. Uh, so, uh, first, on their merry adventure, this is kind of a globetrotting thing, uh, introducing a lot of uh, factions that uh, were either not seen or indirectly seen in the story. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. First off, uh, they go, they come into the territory of the Sand Tribe. Now, those of you mm -hmm. who remember 2009 content know that the Sand Tribe is full of these uh, bestial, regressed, Morlock-type dudes called the Voroks, uh, who, uh, who yep. have regressed so much that they can't even talk anymore. Um, well, and here then, they are not regressed because it turns yes. out the Boda Magna, the Boda Magna ones of these guys didn't regress. Yes, Indeed. exactly, um, because they had more food. A lot of a lot of food philosophy going on in this one. 
Um, they're, so, they're mysteriously aware of the treatment of their desert brethren. Mm, who could have told them? This is like <laughs> foreshadowing or something. Oh who my could gosh. have told them about how? Who could have told them how bad thing, how bad things were, uh, while also annoying the hell out of them with riddles? Mm. Certainly, certainly, uh, nobody who is small and has shovels for hands. Um, so, nobody anyways, was, <laughs> nobody, absolutely nobody, with shovels for hands. <laughs> that, precisely. So the last thing Greg left off on was that uh, these uh, these four traumatized weirdos uh, get captured by the intelligent Vorox. And then Orde looks into the leader's mind and is like, hey, wow, somebody with shovels for hands is manipulating them. And that's where he left <laughs> off. So um, our good friend, our good friend Jeff Douglas picks up um, yep. and uh, yeah. Would good anybody like Jeff. to... Yeah, would anybody else and like to th- pick up? And his thousand arms. <laughs> yes, indeed. Anybody so, else like to uh, carry on from here? Yeah. So, so basically, yeah. So, uh, also in the in the previous chapter that Greg wrote, they um, after they had been captured, the uh, our, our group of heroes are being hunted by the uh, the Vorox for sport, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Vorox, mm-hmm. the Vorox do the whole. Uh, yeah, we're just gonna we're just gonna let you go, but we're gonna take your stuff and disable your powers, and we're gonna hunt you for sport. And we're yeah, also gonna fun, follow you, know? you with a device forever. <laughs> yeah. Turns out the Vorox, the, the, the brain thinky smart Vorox, they have some sort of device that can disable an element elemental powers, which. It's very I wonder inconvenient. where they got that from. Oh my gosh, yeah. certainly no one with shovels for hands. <laughs> certainly no one with shovels for hands. Oh, certainly not. A little small dude. But, um... Mm-hmm. I- so... I'm just imagining that, that, that one scene from, like, fucking... Uh, what was it, like, Bl- Blanick the Hedgehog or something, where it's like, Blanick? I was born... Blanick the Hedgehog? Uh, yeah, I-, I was born with these hideous shovels for hands. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Well, this guy wasn't, but uh, we'll get into that guy later. Mm-hmm. That so, the yeah. shovel guy who most certainly doesn't be in charge of all the shenanigans. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, so our so, heroes uh, have, from have here... split up, yeah. and you know they're running through the through the jungle, being hunted. You know, Ord f- finds out that someone someone from their world is a. Uh, has been a secret great being all along. Oh boy, a secret <gasps> god. So, a sav, oh no. <laughs> and, and they all get, they all get, they all meet up with a different fact, with another, with yet another faction of people who tell, who tell them to do stuff. Hmm. Yeah. Well, well, for, well, for, first they're split up, and and uh, so Zarya meets up with with the um. What's it? The the Iron Tribe from the mm-hmm. from Boda Magna. Yes. yes, coming back to where we what we were talking about earlier. Yes, so he meets up with them, and you know he learns about their struggle, and he's like, you know, I really relate to that. You guys, These guys I, I just met you, but you're yeah. my brothers now. Yeah, mm. the the Iron <laughs> Tribe in on the Iron Tribe on the on the the on the the the, bio, the, the biological planets. They were afflicted by a disease. And uh, uh, also, I, I just want to mention for, for the end of chapter three, I just have a note here that just relates to this one last line. Don't you see? One of the beings from my universe, the one who is on your world now, is really a, ga- a great being. He's been living among us all this time. <laughs> among us. <laughs> among us. Yeah. Among us. Anyway, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So the Iron Tribe, they were basically treated as lepers. Uh, yes. by yeah, the other by it. the other Glatorian and Agori. Uh mm-hmm. and uh to the point where there aren't a lot of uh, of Iron Tribe uh sets during the during the the Glatorian toy line. There's a total mm-hmm. of two. Uh, and there's a total of two and I think one of them is like mm, is like such some crazy guy. Yeah. yeah. Well, they're both pretty crazy. One, one, one of them's a slave and the other one's just a little bit whack. Mm. They're both crazy. Okay. Yeah, these guys are are significantly less crazy. They're actually kind of cool and uh, they see that Zarya's armor is all messed up and they're like, "Hey, let's uh let's get your armor fixed up." 
Yeah, and then mm-hmm. he uses his powers to just magically fix it. I think. Mm-hmm. No, and, no, no. Uh, it, his armor is messed up in a way in a way that he doesn't have the materials to fix. Oh, Whereas yeah. he sees he sees a, a, a weapon in progress of being built, of being designed, of being uh, smelted, and he he just magics in it, it into uh, being smelted, and he makes it better than it would have been if they had manually made it. And yeah, like, so, somehow well, then, this somehow, changes things. Somehow mm-hmm. he turns this thing into proto steel, and yeah. I I don't know much about how proto steel works. Mm-hmm. But I do know that it's one of the rarest materials in the Batoran universe. And you're telling me that a toe of iron can just, like, force meld a, a random tool into proto-steel at will. Now, he's the yes. philosopher. <laughs> it Proto-steel wouldn't be as rare if toe of iron weren't as rare. Uh, Fair enough. I suppose true. that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. And it does, it does say on BSO1 that toe of iron have the ability to create and control it. Well, there, yeah, there you go. Oh, fair enough. In if, case. if you have hmm. superpowers that can manipulate stuff, and if you're clever enough about it, you could turn anything into anything else. It's all hmm. it's all perspective, really. So I trust the process. <laughs> Magneto can use his magnet powers to control wood. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, because he knows everyone's... because he knows more about stuff than things. Mm-hmm. Anyway. So, uh, but yes, Magneto uh, can control my wood. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> Anyways, that was an appropriate noise. <laughs> uh, speaking of, anyway. um, yes. Well, anyway. So around yeah. this point in the story, uh, we start really getting into a group of characters known as the Element Lords. Mm. Uh, now, yeah, uh, these guys. Nice. Um, yeah, uh, these guys used to lead the tribes back in the day before the planet blew, blew up, um, and they're more or less responsible for the planet blowing up. They're the generally bad dudes. Yeah, the old the gods, old basically. Gods. Mm-hmm. Uh, six of them uh, were sort of punished for their crimes by being stuck in a giant maze where they've just been apparently punching each other for 100,000 years. Um, <laughs> like you do. Yeah, um, but one of them did not get put in the maze, uh, and we will uh, we will meet up with her shortly. Um, but hey! Yeah, um, but the Iron Tribe, who never got an Element Lord, um, were, are like, hey, you can manipulate our element, why don't you be our element lord and then we'll like you know reclaim the lost glory we had from a time when we hadn't all died of the plague we um shall you be can as gods yeah exactly <laughs> um we can use you to fight back against well a certain faction uh meanwhile uh sorry max am i taking your thunder or? no you're not you're helping a lot cool cool glad to hear it's it all good um yeah, so uh, once again, with the whole party split up thing, um, uh, Kiara, uh, feisty girl, she has been um, sort of kidnapped by um, by this uh, woman made of dirt. What do you know? It's the Element Lord of Earth. Um, now, she being the single most powerful being on Boda Magna, bar none, um, not trapped in a giant maze, um, has used her power to claim basically total control over the entire planet of Boda Magna. Um, but you know, there's only a few small pockets of holdouts that haven't quite fallen under her control. Um, uh, I also want to point out a, a really interesting quote here that it, I, I did say I had some earlier that in my notes that sort of fell into that sort of fourth wall breaking thing again. Mm. And th- this one in particular stood out to me. I came late as well. I was made separate from the other element lords. Some <laughs> questioned my legitimacy. <laughs> I-, I love how that like references the the many, many arguments in the community since oh, the, yes. the original story was made as to whether or not she is even canon. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I've Heck, yes. I've witnessed some of those myself. They uh, um, yes, argue my legitimacy very loudly and with swear words and <laughs> things She's that we can't say me. on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> so um, for this for our story, we decided that um, she is canon. She does exist. She is alive, um, and, and she's made of dirt. Yes, yes, exactly. Sexy, dirty girl. Sexy dirt. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so her problem is that uh, there's only I think one we of have her. an episode name. Oh dear. <laughs> so I like women. 
Understandable. <laughs> um, so her problem is there's only one of her. Um, everybody else under her control is just a dude or a lady or whatever. So whatever you want to be called, they have no special abilities to, uh, to, you know, uh, conquer. Um, and she's like, Hey, you are incredibly powerful by my society standards. You join and me and one. together. Yeah. I yeah. Like hey. <laughs> exactly. Uh, join me and together we will rule the planet. And Kiara's <laughs> like, Hmm, I don't know how I feel about this. Um, <laughs> and later on in the plot line, uh, Zarya, who has, um, who is joined together with these Iron Agori, um, is, finds himself leading an attack on who else but the Element Lord of Earth. Oh, and no. so, so the Iron Tribe, led by this guy named Deleuze, um, sort of throws Zarya out of a Pokeball, um, and then the Element Lord of Earth sort of throws Kiara out of a Pokeball, and then they do the Spider-Man pointy <laughs> thing, where they're like, wait, what? How did you, what? <laughs> My friends, <laughs> what are you doing here? Yeah. <laughs> Um, and it's just, uh, yeah, and they sort of... Kiara, why are your naughty bits covered in dirt? <laughs> Illegal. Um, yeah, uh, I'll, uh, I'll leave it to you, Max. I just, uh, that's one of my favorite parts of the story, so if you want to... <laughs> yeah, no problem. Yeah. So, while, so while this was happening, um, Ord and Galu were, you know, kind of talking to each other. They were assessing the situation, planning next steps. And Ord kind of opens up a little bit about why he distrusts the great beings because they kind of, you know, abandoned, abandoned their his society and kind of caused pretty much all the problems that they are dealing with to begin with due to their, you know, recklessness. Mm. So after that, kind of off off page off screen. I want to say off screen, but these th there's mm. no screen. So right. off page, uh, while while uh, Zarya and and Kiara are doing their thing. I think they raid the the Vorox, is that true? Oh yeah, that's what they were up to. Yeah, that they, they decided like, oh, let, let's go uh, check out because these Vorox, they have really sophisticated weapons. Let's go yeah. to and their city to and see they're what's not up home with that. Right now. <laughs> and we happen to know they're not home right now mm -hmm. because they're hunting us. They're cuz they're hunting us. Yes. And now they're going. are asleep. Send send dank memes. Yeah, and mm. and and while they're there, they learn of this thing called the they they hear they hear of this thing called the Spirit Forge, which is like a sort of. I lab. wonder what that could be in reference to in fourth wall breaking terms. Oh my goodness! <laughs> wow, it's all connected. Oh my god! <laughs> it's a, it's a Spirit Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the Spirit Forge is like a lab where the great beings, you know, basically sell Halloween costumes. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. It's where, where the great beings are created. We had basically created pretty much everything that they do is their main <laughs> little lab. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, that's where the Vorox got their weapons from. So mm -hmm. from yeah. there, from there, they're on, they take some of the weapons and they meet up with Kiara and Zarya when they're, when no, they're eventually, yeah, Zarya kind of wants to stay with the iron with the iron lads, but he's so he he feels conflicted. He don't want to leave. He's like these these are my people, but also I feel really weird about this whole situation. But also like I like these guys, but like I my got family. stuff to do. But like, mm -hmm. dang, like. Yeah. I'll come back, I guess. I gotta, yeah. I gotta take care of this thing. I gotta find the gods and save the whole world or something. I'll, I'll come right. I'll come right back. Clearly so, less important so yeah. than the little uh, metal disco we were planning on having. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Galu and Zaria, they come in with the weapons. They kind of disrupt things further, and then that's how everyone kind of gets back together. They reconvene, mm. and then they plan their next step to yep. find the um the Spirit Forge. And mm -hmm. so they head up to the North Pole and they find the Skrull Sisters. I they really find like them. Um, they find the psychic women. <laughs> mm. the, I really... psychic, the psychic women. But before Lots we get to that. In this one. I'm so proud of women. Yeah, definitely. Same. Uh, but before <laughs> we get to that, though, I really like the uh, the move that Zarya and Kiara do to, like, um, I, I guess, interrupt the ongoing war so they can, like, leave. Um, mm -hmm. Which is Zarya puts down this... Uh, this underground grid of iron across the whole battlefield, and mm. and Zarya, uh, sorry, and Kiara uh, zaps it with electricity, and they just basically fry the whole battlefield. It's really cool. Yeah, 
Yeah. Hell yeah. Ah! I just did a swear. Uh oh. Oh dear. Whoop. Oh goodness. I just Great realized horror. we forgot mm -hmm. to mention something important. Oh, uh, we did? Be? Oh no! Marindar. Yes. Oh, oh yeah, that guy. I love that guy uh, actually. One of I'm the. Glad that, uh... I'm glad that I'm glad that I'm glad that he I'm glad that the Marindar has a characterization now. Uh, yes. For years, I was wondering if it would actually, you know, ever do anything. Mm -hmm. So the Marindar is uh, this character who was a robot created by the great beings. In case the Toa ever turned evil, he would just kill them all. Um, which is and it think and it thinks that's what's happened now. Yeah. Because yeah, so... it's like because more sp more specifically, it's there to eliminate the Toa if they're like operating outside their programming or like their mm -hmm. intended it, purpose. Yep. It, it certainly does not help change to dissolve it, its uh, belief that the Toa are evil now. That the first Toa it happens upon. Is that Toa too yet that the that the that Moira had had oh, yeah. had uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. I um, love that that they bring Tuya into the story and then just immediately kill her. <laughs> just like right, we are done a with lot, that story. A lot of people, a lot of people were actually very upset about that. And <laughs> I, I I've there I've seen some good arguments as to more things that could be done with her. But mm. don't worry, we'll have her mangled corpse come back soon. Yeah. Mm. Oh, oh yeah. we've got those sixty thousand years <laughs> of, yes. of, of yes. unexplored like, history. We like can a, fill in later. Oh, that's true. Yeah, this is the, this is called the wharf effect. We we uh, we got to establish that the new guy is really strong and dangerous and powerful, mm -hmm. and he pretty much obliterates one of the strongest Toa in the universe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I thought the wolf and... effect was when you heard Michael Dorn's voice in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Go. No, it's when yeah. it's when you want to. You got to establish that the bad guy is strong, so he, he he shows up and immediately takes out the strongest person in the room. Yeah, not only mm. a strong person, but also another villain, pretty much. Mm. Yeah, and this literally one of the strongest characters in in the canon is Toa Two yet in any timeline is no joke. Except in this, she is definitely a joke because her powers, all of her powers, her mass power, her element. If she had the new, if she has the new stone, I don't remember. She does. Oh, that she, she did. She did. That was yeah. the first thing that Mirendar shattered into dust. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mirendar is programmed. To be, Mirendar ha, is basically a one, is basically a one man army able to neutralize anything that comes to the Matoran universe and destroy it. Yeah. Anything. Yeah. Mm. And, uh, yeah. But... I like, by the way, sorry, uh, I like that they designed Ma uh, Marandar as this, he will destroy anything that, like, if our creation go easy, mm. he's, the, he's the ultimate solution. Mm. What he if is the evil? ultimate life form. <laughs> what if Marandar goes evil? Who's there to stop Marandar? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, by that the is end the of, great being for it. It's By the end of yep. yesterday quest, uh, the guy was like, "Oh uh, yeah, we didn't think of that. We, did, yeah. we didn't we didn't consider what would happen if the Toa became self aware. Uh, we don't want to kill them because See, that's so." But now what we it, need to do is we need to make another robot that's even stronger yeah. that can kill Marinda. There's, a difference, there's <laughs> a difference between breaking all of our toys when they go rogue and, and committing genocide. We don't want to do that second thing. Right. Uh, so, but yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, but, in a bit more but detail. Marindar does not actually obliterate to yet. He just sort of kills her. And leaves the body. He he with... he vaporizes her skull or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But uh, her remains happen to be picked up by a certain element lord of Earth, mm -hmm. who is like, "Oh boy, I've always wanted to have power over water." Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh yeah, that did happen. <laughs> I like how yeah. they approach it as though it's some sort of mech as well. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, it, it was yeah. Uh, Toa without its head, without its head, with its head blown off, is basically. Well, let's just shove one of these little lady, guys in there and have him ro run around in it. It's sort of this like a sentinel of, from X Men. This lady is made of dirt. She could literally wear th this Toa's corpse as a mech. Yeah. 
Yeah, oh, I hadn't considered be... that. If she's actually made of dirt, then there's no problem with her, like, fitting herself into Tuyet's armor, is there? No, yeah, true. Oh, that'd be so cool. That'd be so cool. Make sure whoever's uh -huh. writing that knows no, knows my idea. Oh, they know. <laughs> oh, they know. Oh, good. But yeah, moving mm. on. Yeah. So, um, heading towards the North Pole, our, uh, our four brave heroes, um, they come across um, the Skrell native to Boda Magna, who it turns out these guys are not um, all uh, savage militaristic assholes, um, mm -hmm. because they are actually on the defensive, uh, holding off against the Element Lord of Earth. Uh, so they've made sort of a, an alliance with the Ice Tribe of the planet, and then uh, they ask, hey, where's the Spirit Forge? They said, uh, this, uh, this sister of the Skrull named Drepka is like over there. So they say, thanks. Now they're in the Spirit Forge. Um, they're looking around for the great beings when who should appear but Mirandar, um, who's trying to kill all the Toa. But, but, uh, but we can't forget their encounters with fucking throwbots and robo-riders. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> hold on, uh, you're hold you're on. welcome Heroes for that one, Heroes made in a factory. You oh, are God, welcome for that party. one, by the way. I, I got a bit of pushback on that suggestion, but I am so glad it went through. I, I love I, it. I love me it. Too. Yeah. Me too. Me too. It's, 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 I love it. You need. You always need a little bit of comic relief. Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. You know, to, I, to break I, up I the love tension the, a bit. I mm. love the idea. I love the idea of of just the throwbots and the Robo Riders were experiments by the great beings. I love mm. the idea. Yeah, yeah, that's it's kind of what they look like, honestly. Until uh, I knew there, what the, uh, there are yeah. other similar things that we do have plans for in the future. Like we've tentatively discussed the idea of, you know, how the in the powers that be, the Kestora are on the Red Star, but they were also in the City of Silver dimension mm. with Takanuva. So we've mm -hmm. discussed the idea of the Spirit Forge being run by an AI that is that, that presents itself as the big silver how from that universe yeah. as well. We're uh, coming up on two hours, so we got to hurry this up. Oh yes. yeah, I'm keeping track. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. the, the Spirit Forge is full of is full of a bunch of terminals and stuff that's uh, showing up blueprints and like the Toa accidentally stumble upon their baby photos basically blueprints, <laughs> are, yeah, blueprints mm -hmm. detailing exactly how a Toa is built from scratch mm -hmm. and they're like I I Ew, I, I kind of didn't need to see that yeah that just I hate this <laughs> oh yeah uh, when suddenly who should appear but the Mirandar. Um, who starts uh, who starts speaking. They didn't really anticipate that it would be a character. Um, and just like, hey, you, Glatorian, step aside. I'm going to kill these uh, rogue murder machines. And Gelu's like, wow, no, these rogue murder machines are my friends. Um, and so they argue cool, back actually. and forth. Yeah, exactly. They've, they've, learned, uh, they've learned the value of teamwork. They've learned the, the virtue of unity, you might say. <laughs> the real superpower <laughs> of teamwork. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> Um, so they go back and learned, forth for a while. They've learned that the real great beings are the friends you make along <laughs> Very true. Um, and then and the go... Orda makes, makes Skello look like a great being by projecting a cloak on him. No, yes. no, no. But... It, it's even stupider than that, mm. but it, it works so well. It's like that they take the, the great being costume from the spirit Halloween and they <laughs> put it on Gelu. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, yes. they do. Yeah. And then he just, like, projects his memory of a great being's voice through Gelu. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, Mirandar doesn't buy it. He's about to kill them anyway. When who should and show up And then an up, actual but... great being shows up. <laughs> yes, an actual great being, my boy Angans, uh, who Angans. is, uh, who He's might be, who might be the main character of certain stories coming to a mess and legacy near you, but, whoa, whoa. 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 nobody yes, said that. Spoilers? Whoa, oh my gosh. Um, but the moving right along. Bionicle. Ooh. Um, Each set sold separately. <laughs> <laughs> New from Bionicle. Uh, so, um, Angons is like, hey, uh, no, I've been watching these, uh, these killer robots uh, through my magic scientist cameras, and I have concluded that they are not bad, actually. Uh, uh, you know. Angons, what? What? And gods, what do you see with your science eyes? Yeah, yeah exactly. I have, concluded, I have concluded that they are kind of bad, but they're only a little. They're they're basically about as fallible as I was when I made you. Because, dang it, I I messed up real bad when I made you. I made you. You're a genocide robot. That was 
That was sure messed up with me. I <laughs> and then Marinda has this like existential crisis over yeah. this. He's like, "Why yeah. did you make me then? What were you thinking?" <laughs> Yeah. He's the, just the, the Rick and Morty like, scene. Dumb. The Rick and Morty I scene. Thought, what is my purpose? You exist for I, genocide. You, oh I, I, we, I, I, I wanted to make a, a toy to break my other toys, but then it turned out that my other toys were were alive. So my, the toy that breaks the other toys is just a genocide robot, and I felt bad. <laughs> mm-hmm. So then Miranda just kind of runs off and leaves. Um, and then our four of the, the four heroes are left uh, having a nice little chat with Angantz uh, about, like, hey, you know, uh, mission accomplished, Matanui fixed the planet. What the hell is going on here, though? Um, and then uh, Angantz is like, oh, fine. Oh, everything's bad. There's a, there, it turns out one of, uh, one of my uh, co workers is uh, hiding in your, was hiding in your guy, and he's got shovels for hands. <laughs> yep. Mm, strange foreshadowing, but could could a future story possibly deal with this trouble-handed fellow? I I don't know about that. Um, so this, uh, you know, <laughs> I take it I take it back. Shovels for hands is the name of this episode. <laughs> there we go. go. There we go. Zombies on the moon. I'm zombies mm-hmm. on the moon. Let's go. <laughs> and then the story ends with Angot saying, "All right, fine. I'll take you to see the rest of my uh, my fellow co-workers. Um, but uh, but watch out. It'll be." pretty spooky and on that note sad <laughs> yes all right uh we're coming up on uh we have uh what one hour left just about, about yeah yes yeah. okay right. we have one hour left and we have uh we have uh one, pretty one, one story and, and a bit <laughs> oh yeah 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 um so over on the powers that be um fun fact is that originally i was supposed to be the author for the powers that be um i actually had um a pretty bad draft that i will not be releasing publicly um that was uh that was my version of the story but unfortunately i had to uh had to you know um had to take a break for personal reasons um and so it was not me that actually wrote this it was jeff douglas um so uh, R- reese, uh, reese from lightstone also had a lot of input on it as well because yes. he specializes in horror writing specifically yes. and i think that shone through pretty well on this mm, Damn, absolutely like- so I'm gonna um, take a I guess might have... that your draft was Pohatu and Kopaka making out for three straight chapters. <laughs> hey, I did not say three. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, and there would be anything but straight. Why did I say straight? But yes, how does that be? We got... Potato and boyfriend. Potato <laughs> and boyfriend. <laughs> So, uh, Powers at B focuses on uh, sort of two uh, two stories happening at the same time. Um, Zombies. Both... Zombies, yes. Uh, both of these stories began in an earlier serial, Reign of Shadows. This is a continuation of that one. Um, so over on Plotline 1, um, we have Toa Kapaka and Toa Pohatu, who are other uh, members of the Toa Nuva. Um, they're tracking down a murderer, um, some sort of murderer who seems to have shovels for hands. What's going on? Um, well, we don't know that then- yet. Oh, we, we don't know that yet. Um, Wait, but, uh, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. Chip, mm-hmm. you were asking me when I was making the trailer, like, who was the guy who, like, poked sexy Tren Krom to death? Was that oh, yeah. supposed to be Valika? <laughs> I guess it must have been, yeah. No, there no, you no. Go. There you go. no, 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 bleep that, bleep that, bleep that. We haven't, we haven't said his name yet. <laughs> that was yeah. supposed to be Shovels for Hands. There Shovel Hands. Also, it, it, it is it is interesting it is wild coming back to this after the after we've gone through the the finale of season one of gathered friends when greg revealed a lot of the information that we built this off of like mm-hmm. we didn't know and we, we kind of take some of this information for granted now but we didn't yeah. know until that episode came out mm-hmm. that the original idea for this story was like a zombies in space kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. I thought it was just a murder mystery. Mm-hmm. So anyway, so anyway, someone killed Tred Crom and blast and Tred Crom with his dying thoughts blasted ah. the psychic projection of the red star into the boys' heads. Well, well, the yeah. first thing was that was Karzani, Karzani was died. killed. Yeah, yeah. and we Karzani suspect died. Lesevic because Lesevic has beef with Karzani, and, and his, sword. his sword was, was the murder thing. weapon. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then they found Karzani, and then a bird guy showed up, and then Gardas showed up. Yes, mm. uh, and then Gardas was like, "Hey guys, 
I've been to Super Hell. You want to go see <laughs> Super Hell? It's and up then, in the sky. You'd be surprised. Yeah. I can and then I don't uh, want to go there, but I'll take you for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> and then he pops them over to Super Hell, where they find out that um, almost every robot character who has ever died goes to Space Station Super Hell, um, where <laughs> the they are. Star is yes. Super Hell. <laughs> Uh, where they are traumatized into becoming zombies uh, that harass and, uh, you know, um, like, terrify all the other people who die and go up there. Yeah. And it's horrifically dark, and I hate it. And I, I, I love how this was, so, this, this was set up as early as Galley Nuva's blog. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I, I, I both love and hate that on the, the quote-unquote official ending where the serials left off, they left off on the cliffhanger of like, oh, hi, it's me, Mavra. <laughs> yeah. The person yeah. who yep. died. <laughs> yep, and uh, th they also meet Turaga... Uh, Jovan. Jovan. Uh, yeah. yeah, Turaga Toa Combiner from that magazine, mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. What, yeah. One thing uh, I, I really want to see later on down the line, and I think I've got Reese on board to write this, is a Gali Nuva Takanuva's blog kind of story that is written... From the perspective of Turaga Jovan, hmm. that could be interesting. Sorry. And so, it it would be like it would take place between his death and the beginning of the powers that be. Oh, interesting. Anyway, uh, so yeah, that so so Mavra leads Potato and boyfriend uh, carefully through the space station, mm -hmm. uh, the dark, spooky space station. They meet mm -hmm. Turaga Jovan, who uh, conf who knew Lesovic before. Before he's, I, he was he's been traumatized for a while, but trauma just gets worse over time. Uh, he knew him like a thousand years ago, uh, and mm -hmm. he's all like, "No, the the the, Jova, the, the less of it I know would never stab a god in the face." Uh, yeah. Let alone, <laughs> it's let alone gotta be two of them. Mm -hmm. Let alone two of them. It's got to be someone else. Someone with shovels for hands. <laughs> uh, anyway, Quite you're possibly. in super hell now. There's no sense worrying about about what's going on over in the in the realm of not super hell, because mm -hmm. uh, no one that comes here ever leaves, except yeah. Gardas. not anymore. Except Gardas, except... he's he's an exception. He's fine. Yeah. Before before Gardas, people uh, came. Uh, when robots die, they're supposed to come to the Red Star, get fixed, and then be beamed back to go back to work. Mm -hmm. But then Gardas showed up, a character that was able to teleport, and he he teleported off of the Red Star himself, and I guess that messed up the, the Red Star's own teleporter. No, 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 no. they 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 he, they, he, the, he, the, broke, the he broke it. The the Castora think he broke it. They blame him for it, but he yeah, doesn't I... seem like he knows anything to do with it. Yeah. And I... the Castor are like, hmm, should we do something? We should do something. I... And then Kopaka yeah. just freezes them solid because yeah. he's fed I up just... with their shit. <laughs> yeah, I just assume uh, up you said the S word. <laughs> mm -hmm. I just I just assume that Gardis did it, but on accident, so it's okay. Yeah, I I yeah. think he was probably like in a panic and like smashed up a yeah. bunch of like stuff. I I think that that Gardis just teleported off the Red Star himself, and the Red Star was like, "Error! Tell someone teleported, but I didn't do that. I'm I guess my teleporter's not needed anymore. I'm gonna turn it off." Mm -hmm. <laughs> I and that's one possible so. explanation. Uh, I don't but, know. Uh, moving back to the story, Look, I deal with a lot of stupid technology. Yes, let's not get distracted. Uh, they built like a. They built like the the characters that aren't great. The characters that are dead but not zombies, uh, up in Super Hell have built like a like a bunker here. Mm. Yeah. Also, and, what what what? It, it's at this point that we get one of the first real like visceral moments of the story, where mm -hmm. we see one of the the Matoran like actually turning mm -hmm. and the first reaction from i think it's taraga jovan is to just strap him to a stretcher and throw him in the incinerator <laughs> yeah oh my yes. god they just yep. it's <laughs> yeah. pretty bleak mm. pretty bleak but uh what are you gonna do when someone turns into a zombie you when gotta loses their minds they're they're pretty much dead effectively mm. yep. But uh, the Toa, they gotta, you know, leave 
So they, yeah. they uh, Jovan they... tells them that there's a there's like a control room they can use uh, to possibly you know fix the situation. Yeah. Uh, by the way, um, Taraga Lee Khan uh, was also there. Oh wait, no, sorry, wait, he doesn't no. tell them that. That was from my draft. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, so uh, uh, yeah. No, so... Taraga, Taraga Lee Khan is in there, but yeah. right. Well, Jovan he's lost tell his mind already. Right. Jovan. But, Jovan but the, the first. Them that... Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. That the first thing we got to get to at this point is we, 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 we're we bouncing back and forth between stories here in this yes. one. And yeah. meanwhile, down on the planet, Lewa yes. is singing Kumbaya with the jungle, Gogori. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, wow, so, so relevant. Pick, picking up from Reign of Shadows, um, Greg had done the very admirable task of taking all of the most powerful characters in the entire story, sticking them Manuva. all in a room... And Lee Manuva, and Kapura, and Hafu, and Vizan. Um, what do you mean, and... the and Kapura? Kapura is one of the most powerful characters in the universe. <laughs> well, there you go. Um, and then stuck them all in a room and had them just argue at each other uh, for like three consecutive <laughs> stories. And they're they're continuing to argue at each other. And where we last left off, this uh, this other group of assholes, um, they were all um, they'd all been teleported into a new room. Um, containing one of the great beings who never got named. Um, Mm. And this poor guy, uh, he touched the Mask of Life, and the Mask of Life uh, cursed him so that everything he touches turns alive. The other great beings were like, wow, that's bad. Uh, (laughs) So let's put you in a jail forever. And, well, that's just where he's been for 100,000 years. And And then... Possibly, someone with possibly shovels for hands tries to Ooh. blow them all up. Oh my gosh, that's <laughs> yes, real, that's it crazy. Rigs, it rigs the fortress to explode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they're all arguing over whether they should free this guy. Um, when uh, how, do, how exactly does it play out? They make it out fine. Yeah, we um, don't actually we don't actually see it. I don't think. I, we're... I, I think Helrix uses her water powers to like mm-hmm. block mm-hmm, right. the explosion or something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sort of redirect the blast around them. Yeah. Mm. yeah so anyways, uh, they're all out. Um, they, uh, what is it, Miserex, Miserex and Tuyet. Yeah, Tuyet walks off, which is, uh, walks off into the other story where she gets Mirandard. Um, yep. Miserex flies off, he has better things to do. And mm. the rest of the group finds Lee Winuva partying it up with the jungle Jungleagori. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, v- Vizon es- escapes as well. I think he goes yes. off with the mad um, uh, great yes. being. Yeah, he and the great this, being. this is this is one of the first. This is one of the first times where we establish that the great being is have innate control over Matoran universe stuff. And he's able to like he's able to just like snap his fingers and suddenly Vizon has witch time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I delivered a software update. You're less stupid now. Come on, keep up. <laughs> yeah, uh, so they're he off downloaded running more RAM. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. He downloaded more ones to balance out the zeros. Uh, so then they run out of the plot. Um, and then this plot line focuses on oh, let's see if I can name them all. Uh, uh, focuses on uh, Liwa, Helrix, um, uh, Axon, Brutaka, Kapura, Hafu, and Artaka as they are all hanging out. Mm-hmm. Um, when then suddenly um, that group is attacked um, by. My memory is failing me because I didn't write The Jungle Vorox. Yes, yes, the Jungle Vorox. Yeah, um, so it's all connected. And then, yeah. Mm. And, and then it's like uh, our group of <laughs> Insert Pepe Sylvia here. There you go. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, not, not just not just the the jungle Vorox, but also Attacus and Perditus. Yes, yeah. they had uh, they had uh, just staged a prison break. That's right, over on Barra Magna, picking up from Light on the Dunes. It's then Perditus. Yes. yes, there we go. And then Perditus stole a car, drove all the way over to Boda Magna, um, <laughs> where he uh, where he has uh, Tahu, Galio, and Anua in hot pursuit on the 2008 vehicles. Mm. Um, and then they meet up with Liwa, and then Axon, Brutaka, Kapura, Hafu, Helrix, and Artaka. Um, in the middle of all this chaotic fighting and what the hell is going on, a man with shovels for hands shows up, uh, verbally commands Artaka to shut up and gives him a blue screen, and then kills him. No! Or at least <laughs> mortally wounds him. The, meanwhile, on the Red Star... 
<laughs> Meanwhile, on the Red Star, zombies, yes. Zombies, zombies. Yes. Oh no, uh, Kabaka, the I, 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 is a zombie. They recognize. I, mm -hmm. I especially love the writing to bring Hydraxon in at the end of the chapter. Yeah. And oh yeah. When we had Lahari reading that during mm -hmm. uh, Roar of the Kanoe Dragon on 8 10 2022, that mm -hmm. was mm, Chef's Kiss. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Lahari is absolutely fantastic at narrating things like that. Oh, absolutely. The Toa have long and of course, your narration for Light on the Dunes was also fantastic. Don't get me wrong there. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> Yep, the Toa have long forgotten their days on on uh, Cardinoe with Hydroxon, but seeing him there, seeing him as a shambling zombie, apparently reawakens their memories and makes yeah. them real sad. Mm -hmm. Yay! Oh God, that was the old age sadness. <laughs> no, but it, no, it's fine. It's fine. There's another Hydro. We got a new, we we have Hydroxon at home. It's fine. <laughs> Hydraxon at home becomes Descartes again. <laughs> what, what, what is Descartes Hydraxon doing these days anyway? Is he still alive? Uh, well, yeah, still alive. If, you stay, if you stay tuned with Vision of the Great Beings, oh, you'll okay. just find out. We'll find out for how long he's, he's mm. alive for. <laughs> <laughs> and how Maybe long there will be two more. zombie Hydraxons. Oh <laughs> Maybe they can kiss. Well, not, not after this story. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway... Oh. So, um, uh, around the same time, Kopaka and Pohatu make it up to the control room when who should appear, uh, so they have a, they have a brief little exchange about, we think Lesovic is doing the murders, we think he's Mr. Shovelhands, and then, uh, and then Lesovic shows up, he teleported up there for reasons, um, and then he and shows, he, he puts his hands up and he says, look, no shovels! <laughs> there you go. I'm dead. Which proves meanwhile, innocence. meanwhile, Turaga Likon is just mm. there on the floor, and I yes. absolutely love the description of him because it it's is an old man moment. The description of Turaga Likon is word for word gold good guy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's, he's uh, like I think missing that's the hands. Part. It has mm -hmm. got stubs for legs or something. <laughs> yeah. Rest like, yeah. I, 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 uh, that's yeah. so perfect. I think like can, I can't believe like, I missed that actually. Within our that. canon, bringing that yeah. as like a, a canon ish version of Gold Good Guy's appearance oh. is absolutely so now, great. It's Lee so zombie. Now gold, so now Gold Good Guy doesn't have to be a canon for, for Turaga Lee Con. Gold Good Guy is a canon for Zombie Lee Con. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, hey, he lacks the the eye lights, he lacks the hurt line. I mean, it's the, the, I, 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 the, that this this thing here is one part of the story that I will probably take a bit of credit for because I insisted during the meetings that <laughs> for the shock value alone, I want Turagalikon <laughs> to turn on screen. Yeah. yeah, I want an old man. I want an old man losing losing his mind on screen right now. <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. but yes, moving along, we mm -hmm. moving right along. We have you know we have Lesovic there being like, I can explain. It's not what it looks like. Mm -hmm. I can explain. Yeah. So uh, prior to this, um, Kabaka and Pohatu had met um, the builder of the Toa canisters, who was a nameless character. Um, Jeff Douglas did they, a very brilliant little twist here where Greg said all of the named characters are alive. Builder of the Toa <laughs> Canisters isn't named, so he died, yeah. he's on the Red Star. He explains, <laughs> hey, I knew Trenkrom, and yeah, no, the person who did it, great being in disguise, probably has shovels for hands. And I so like that like, they find the Builder of the Toa Canisters in a room that the Castora just have full of spare parts. Mm -hmm. And and the builder of the canister is just lying in a dumpster full of bro of broken bodies and spare parts. Yeah, mm -hmm. indistinguishable. Now, did the Castora put him there, thinking that he was part that he belonged there because he and he didn't protest, or did he crawl in there thinking this is trash? I I am trash. I belong here. That's how I Honestly, took it. Honestly, relatable, but yeah. uh, that's uh, that's a question for another I time. I love this. I love this. I love this trash lad. He's my oh, favorite yeah. guy. He's yeah, my favorite absolutely. boy. <laughs> He's a good boy. Yeah. Uh, so... I also wanted to mention real quick, like mm -hmm. back on the the planet, the interactions between Kapura and Artaka and Oxon and Brutaka <laughs> are yeah. absolutely priceless. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they even the most powerful beings in the universe. Are baffled at Kapura's abilities to just sh to just to he just, just happen. He just goes places. Yeah, he just, yeah. He, he, just he moves goes different. Places. Just takes he practice. Moving different. 
It's a skill yeah. issue. Archaka can't figure it out, and his power, his mass power, is being able to figure out how stuff works. Mm -hmm. Axon's yes. power is being able to observe the truth in any situation. Can't figure it out. They're just yes. baffled by Kapura's Kapura. Kapura is too autistic for these gods. Mm -hmm. We need to we need to c continue on for time. But mm, yes, yes. Exactly. So, uh, they meet Lesevic, they're like, hey Lesevic, are you a great being with shovels for hands? He says no. When suddenly, a great being with shovels for hands shows up. And <laughs> oh why? Spouts oh, riddles oh. at them! He just starts spouting riddles at them, playing into his and characterization then, and then the from 2006. And the Tawanuva to recognize this, this, this despicable monster, and they're like, what? what? You, the guy... Valley I, 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 I also <laughs> love I also love his the, he, another fourth wall breaking thing here like you could ask many questions you could ask what my intentions entail why did I let Karzani rebuild me did I replace the mind of some Matoran when I claimed this body or was Velika always a great being is Velika my real name can I become a Toa what am I like <laughs> in so many other universes who cares it, this, this is literally <laughs> I, questions that everyone has asked Greg and <laughs> those are some of the first things Things that he says that aren't riddles in all of Bionicle. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because he is just so tired of this gimmick he has saddled himself with, I guess, that he just wants to just spit things out. Yeah. But he also doesn't want to provide any information. Of so, so he says, yeah. um, hey, Toa, um, I'm looking for people to join my uh, my evil dark side. <laughs> join um, me and together we can rule the planet. <laughs> Yeah. Did you give a then... shit about the? Did you give a shit about the Foya Nui revolution? Revolution <laughs> at all? And then yeah, he, that hurt. He, he, that hurt me. Yeah. And then he, and then he offers up a riddle where the clear answer is no. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> that was th to me. That's one of the s saddest things because Velika was like my favorite character of that year. Yeah. Well, and now it's a little twist Greg... of the knife. <laughs> He's a real well, bastard. Well, Velika is Greg Farshi's favorite Batoran for this reason, which is the opposite <laughs> of your reason. Mm. There you go. <laughs> so, uh, then Velika's like, okay, you don't want to join me? Uh, well, that's too bad, because this entire space station is about to crash into the planet, killing everybody on board, including you. Bye. And then he disappears yeah. to go kill Artaka. Yeah, because he just, like, he, while he was there, he just gutted what was left of the teleportation system for the Red, Sc Red Star and mm -hmm. just noped out with it. Yeah, yeah. He yeah, turned yeah. it into, like, a backpack. Suit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, he's, like, holding a tele... He's, like, he has, like, a big teleportation backpack or something. He's yeah. traded in his shovel hands for teleporter hands. Oh, no, he there still has shovel... He still has shovel hands. He just can teleport now. Yeah, well, <laughs> he's a science god. He can he can do it. <laughs> yeah. 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 So then all the Toa think quickly. Um, they're like, okay, what are we going to do? Um, Lesevik's like, hey, guys, um, I've been a tragic character. Can I tragically sacrifice my life? And, all the <laughs> and they're all like, you know what? Sure, man. So Lesevik jumps out of the space station. Out of the window. Uses his, uses his air powers to push himself down and then air Nova blasts, killing himself... To cushion the blow and allowing it to like not blow a hole in the planet. Um, now, I, I do have to say, like Nova blasts generally aren't supposed to kill the user. That only applies to Glatorian who have been given Toa powers because mm. their bodies aren't built okay. to withstand such okay. energies. So that had to be like a massively powerful Nova blast to kill okay, Lesevic but, himself. Uh also, I mean, it was, it was a stuff. Nova Blast. <laughs> it was a Nova Blast in between a meteor and a planet, and he was he he died burning up in reentry there. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, also, I just want to mention uh, he didn't use his air powers to like uh, fall in front of the Red Star. Uh, no, he nah. used his mask power to make himself heavier by gaining the powers of an elephant or something. <laughs> 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 Wow. The power of an elephant. It's yeah, I goodness. forgot he, he wears a fax on, doesn't he? Yeah, he, he does. does. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Gaining the powers of an elephant. It's bigness. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so anyway. moving right along, uh, Kopaka and Bohachu make it out alive. Everybody else is either insane, a zombie, or tragically sacrificed themselves. Um, so, Kopaka and Bohachu go down to meet Liwa. And then, uh, also meeting Liwa are Tahu, Gali, and Onua. I mean, what no, do you no, know? No, All not the to Toa Nuva are together again. 
And what and do you Malika know? Their dad is there. is there. And what do you know? Their dad is bleeding out on the ground. Uh, not, not to gloss so over sad. the fact. Not to gloss over the fact that the red star just crashed into the planet. By the way. <laughs> oh yeah, that, that's much less important. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, but I mean, there was like uh, there was like a gust of wind, so it's fine. And also not to gloss over the fact that the previous story that when when Morendar killed Tuyet, yet, it created a new lake. <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Lake two yet. Like the power leaking out or whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um yeah, so yeah, the, the, the geography is getting all messed with up. With their dad. Their dad is all like, I'm proud of you, sons and daughter. And daughter, yes. Tahu, I'm really sorry that I downgraded you for I don't know <laughs> why I did that. But that was, uh, it's okay. That was poor... I, 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 he he does know why he did it. It was for marketability. But he's sorry about it. <laughs> it's for marketability. Oh, also, he gave Lewa a special upgrade that ma- that keeps him from being mind controlled ever again. I love mm-hmm. that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I also, I also like her. Lewa's like been, been mo- body jacked and mind jacked so much in this story. He is the mind jack guy, and never mm-hmm. again will mind jacking be your master. Mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. also Artaka was the one who, t- when he was giving them their little pep talk, he. He mentioned the original, like, story Bible names for the Toa. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, yes. Like, Axe, Blade, etc. I, I thought, yes. I thought yeah. that was neat. <laughs> that was, yeah, that was. a cool little callback. So much of these life. stories are just a love letter to the franchise, and that's, yeah. that's what I love so much about I it. I love it. <laughs> but yes, I like that they get snuck in as well without actually effect. Like, it doesn't seem yeah. wrong for him to... Exactly, exactly. Mm-hmm. It works both in universe and out of universe, which takes a lot of effort to pull off. Well, yeah, it's mm-hmm. not something that's it's not something like like 2010 Sonic writing where it's so forceful that it like the character looks at the screen is like, "Hey, did you get that <laughs> joke there?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. And then Velika is there. Yeah, he's <laughs> just there, and then yes. everybody's like, "Oh, hey, look! It's that normal Voya Nui guy with shovels yeah. for hands. He can't everyone possibly be a murderer." Everyone that doesn't know that Velika is evil assumes that Velika just came along with the Toa Nuva, yeah. including the Toa Nuva. They don't question it, yeah. and everyone who is just on the exploding wreckage of the Red Star is like, "Hey, that guy's evil. He's the don't villain. He's the away. murderer." Grab him! Should we do and something? We should do something. And then, yeah. like, yeah, then a, Attacus and Perditus pull up. He jumps on their motorcycle. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I, I just love how this chapter ends with these mm-hmm. three riding away with explosions behind them. Rohatu <laughs> <laughs> tries to catch up with them because he's he's a fast boy. But, uh, uh-oh, great beings can neutralize mass powers. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, got, we have to we actually had a conversation about this the other day. We have to be very careful writing this in the future because mm-hmm. when the when the civil war starts, there there has to be some clearly established limitations to powers like this so they yeah, just can't yeah. hand wave away any conflict. Yeah, and just like yeah. what the powers are as well for the characters yeah. that we I don't think, know. I think it's going to be I think it's going to need to be just just uh just a thorax fruit is going to need to take out this this little boy. <laughs> That'd be quite cool, actually, if it was yeah. one of the like humblest weapons in the universe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's yeah. that could so, be a good um, idea. But yeah. but hey. So with so, uh, with the teary uh, teary death of Artaka, um, the Toa Nuva all gathered together, and then um, yeah, Tahu stands up and he's like, "Well, uh, you know, we just uh, we've reunited all the assholes. Um, we've just uh, fought together." people from two worlds in this random spot uh you know uh, apparently 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 we've just destroyed a mysterious beacon of mystery yeah uh (laughs) golly what are your thoughts on that and golly's i didn't like that wiggly mother effer yeah (laughs) i never liked i never liked that wiggly thing in the upper sky Yeah. yeah So President and, uh, Tahu gives a little president speech. I looked at it once yep. with the X-ray eyes. It was bad. Yeah. I didn't tell anyone because it was scary. It was bad. Yeah. Yes. Also, and uh, so I, then the and survivors then of the was battle. Like, oh yeah, I have X-ray eyes, and it was bad. Yeah. We got yeah. we got to wrap up this story. Yeah. Well, we, got 40, it, we got we got forty two minutes left. Yeah, we're doing we're, a yeah. we're all right. <laughs> Wait, I, what? 
I, I just want to say it, it, it ends wow. on the Toa Nuva finally being back together for the first time in weeks, I think, in universe. Yes, for the first yes time and, the, and the first time in, in 10 years in, in real yeah, life, or over 10 life. years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that, that's going to be another challenge in writing this story going forward, in that, like, it's been so long in real life that mm-hmm. we. we it's going to be hard to write it without being in with being separated from that mindset right. because we have to remember that it's been a decade for us but it's been like a few days for them so we can't bring back too many concepts that may have previously been overused just because mm-hmm. you know we have been apart from them for so long because if you read these back to back to back to back like we're doing it's just going to be rapid fire nonsense well yeah. you can with tahu because of because he he said that his life his job is so boring that it feels like time is slower for him now hmm. yeah yeah so tahu can be the nostalgia the... guy he can would be that, the nostalgia critic the... <laughs> he's literally the, the nostalgia. He literally Dabi? is the nostalgia guy. He was downgraded for the purposes of nostalgia. Mm-hmm. Yes, I I'd say would that be the conclusion of the powers that be? Have we covered everything about that? Uh, there's also Lord of Elements. If we wanted to touch on that briefly. Oh, mm-hmm. oh yeah. We, we also wanted get... to go. We also wanted to go over as above, so below. The definitely yes. not oh, yeah, yeah, reference yeah, yeah. thing. That, that's that's what <laughs> I was trying to wrap up. <laughs> Paris yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. As above, so below. So below. The story that is totally not related to a song streaming on uh, streaming on Spotify uh, for you to listen to right now uh, by. Uh, so yeah, by uh, by Essinger, very good fellow. Yeah. We're all big fans of him. Essinger, if you're listening, did a great job. We're all very proud yeah. of you. Yep. You're a very um, good boy, and you deserve a cookie. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. So uh, Possibly so, two cookies. Indeed. <laughs> so, Several uh, uh, cookies. So As Above, So Below, the short story uh, was written by Godel, I believe. Yeah. Yes. And it was performed by Greg Fashti. <laughs> Indeed. Mm-hmm. What mm-hmm. the heck? Yeah. I didn't listen to the recording. Yeah, <laughs> we, uh, we we wanted to write something up for him to read on Bionicle Day in 2023 as the way of announcing his involvement in the project, mm-hmm. and he agreed to do it, so that's what we gave to him. Do you mm-hmm. know what? Weirdly, these last two, the Lord of Elements and the... Uh, oh, what was it called again? Uh, as Above, So Below. Mm-hmm. These two are... I distinctly thought these are the greggiest. Do you know uh-huh. what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> these I are actually. very, very Greg. Yeah. Um, one of Gonald's strengths yes. is that he is very skilled at replicating Greg's writing style. Mm. 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 Definitely. Which is uh, which is uh, a skill that's very valuable to have in continuing Greg. Yeah. Yes. I, I definitely noticed that you know while while Jeff Douglas has a fantastic writing style of his own, it, it is Jeff quite different Douglas, from Greg's. The man mm. with a million faces. <laughs> Every single one of them handsomer than the other. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so yeah. as above, so below generally is about the um the uh, what's it? The awakening of the great beings. Exactly, yeah. So uh-huh. yeah. And that most was are, that was built that was basis. that was there was a quote about this at the end of the yesterday quest, but this builds on it very slightly in that in one of the meetings that we had with Greg regarding the the future of this story, which resulted in many rewrites and delays into this year. But one of the things he revealed, which this short story is built on, is the location of the great beings in what yes. is known as the Veiled City in Boda Magna. Mm-hmm. Ah, yep. I see. Yeah, so this is yep. the place that Angons is going to be uh, leading our um, that well, the yesterday plus, questers plus on towards, <laughs> presumably. Well, you my yields are stuff to stay I'd tuned. I'd like to call them the B team. Understandable. Uh, <laughs> I always personally envisioned the Veiled City as if you've ever looked at the concept art early on from Bo Tornston, I, I mm. imagine that's what it would look like. <laughs> mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, there's uh, there's a lot of discussion going on behind the scenes about what that might look like. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't want to give away too much just yet. Right. No spoilers. Mm-hmm. Any any other comments on as above so below? I mean, um, it's uh, I'm wakey, absolutely wakey. thrilled. Yeah, 
I'm absolutely thrilled that it confirms, uh, like, sort of canonizes uh, a fan theory that I've had for a while about what the great beings were doing. The mm. being that they just found a bunker and they were like, you know, screw this, we're just gonna, you know, to leave. We're just, gonna the, uh, well, until, that, we're just gonna wait until the universe is fixed. That that, mm. that was one thing that Greg specifically mentioned, but it was like he didn't he didn't really say it outright it was it mm. almost felt more like he was testing our creativity excuse mm. me testing his creative testing our creativity with his words where mm. he he said he sort of answered our question of what are the great beings doing with another question whereas like well if they're not create the great beings create compulsively they mm. have to they are constantly creating things so if they're not doing that then mm. what would they be doing so the, mm. the conclusion we came to is that they're asleep. They put themselves in stasis. Mm -hmm. ah. And, well, there might just be a story exploring why they did that. Ooh. Yes. Interesting. Ooh. That, like that's that's going to be very exciting for the future. But mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, like what Lee, I like what Liam said. Make it be what Liam said. <laughs> <laughs> but that so, brings anyways. us to our, our final story. Of the, mm -hmm. of the yes, I mm -hmm. love that the element. I love the element the lords arguing with each other. I love that the element. <laughs> I love that the lord of that the element lord of fire sounds like what Tahu sounded like in the movie when he was all poisony. Uh, I wonder. I wonder who who was the the handsome voice who lended Ooh. themselves to the narration and Element Lord of Water in this story. <laughs> what? What? I don't know. Who could that be? Uh, probably <laughs> someone who is going to be part of this podcast. Oh wait! Mm. Oh <laughs> my god! <laughs> was it you? Yes, it yes. was me. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm, I'm the I'm the one. I uh, wow. I I didn't write Lord of Elements. Um, uh, mm -hmm. though I did sort of. Um, direct sort of like a special version of it for audio um, mm. and like made some edits to the script for the audio version um, mm. so because there's a wow. prose version which is kind of the one on the website and then also there's an audio drama version of it where it kind of like removes there's less narration and more kind of like natural dialogue right yeah, yeah. And, and um, um, I I like them I like them uh, all talking like spear characters. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> uh, Sigma, well, I Sigma, I believe you were in the audio version as well. Yes, I was. Um, I played the Element Lord of Ice and also the Lord of Rock. I believe is that right? That's correct. Oh yes. yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. No, had a great time. Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, other other voice actors include uh, Kathy Fausch. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, yep. Talon Sims and TK Staple Stapleton. That is correct. Yes. Hell yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. One of the voice actors with a stapler. <laughs> <laughs> no. And I, okay. I'll also add, if if you guys enjoy audio dramas, I think mm. we'll have a, a special treat for you guys near the the end of this season. Ooh. Ooh. Spicy. Ooh. Is it is it more staples? Unfortunately not. <laughs> but yes. But real quick, while well, we end it, let's yes. let's talk so, about what Lord yes. of Elements is. What 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 yeah. is uh, what it's about? Right. Uh, for those of you at home, uh, while we were going through the yesterday quest, you may recall that we mentioned that uh, six of the Element Lords were reduced to punching each other in a maze for a hundred thousand years. Well, these are those six assholes, um, where they're all uh, they're all arguing yet again. You would think that they wouldn't be able to argue even more, but I figure if you can do something for one thousand years straight, you can do you it can for do it hundred thousand for another few <laughs> minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, uh, so they're they're arguing. When someone they're, they're is each literally other. a being of fire. Their their anger probably doesn't go out. Mm. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's, it's like uh, it's, so. it's like it's like a it's like a red lanterns. Their their anger is eternal. Yeah, yeah basically. Uh, so um, they're they're punching each other still. When suddenly, um, in the midst of these six beings, comes a seventh voice, uh, and they haven't really heard of this person. They heard this person before. They're like, "Who are you?" And, and then, why are you talking sense? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, and uh, and Max, wanna you you uh, you did a lot of work on this one. Why don't you? Uh, yes, why don't thank you, take you very much. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so this voice around them is is basically pointing out, be like, hey, the Element Lords, they're pretty silly, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> 
That's it. That's the story. Roll credits. <laughs> but no, I'm putting no. together a team, and I'd like you all to join me. And if you don't <laughs> join me willingly, well, I'm the Element Lord of Psionics. Yeah. So yes, so, so yeah, I it's can the... make you join me if you don't want to. So exactly. I, 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 I do like though that she she has a different title to separate herself from the yes. rest of them. She goes mm. by the the elder sister of Psionics. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, but yes, and that is because she used to be a sister of the Skrull. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What? Yeah. Mm? That's that's and her this sort character of was inspired. Yes, um, this character was inspired. Queen on this here podcast. Understandable. Yep. Uh, fully agreed. Um, now, Max, this character was inspired by a, a line uh, that Greg wrote in one of the serials. Is that right? That's correct. Yes. So there was a sort of like um, myth uh, about. If, I think I think it was in was it in Simon's Tale? It was. I th it was something to yeah. do with Anona, and. Ooh. And it was, it was a sort of basically kind of a, a being with like si super strong psionic powers from the elder, like from the um, sisters of the Skrull, their culture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is mm -hmm. sort of basically like the truth behind that legend. So it was, mm -hmm. so it was, um, it was a, it was a sister of the Skrull that was taken by the great beings and turned into an element lord of psionics. Hmm. And uh, I think our, without going into too much details going forward, I think our, our main idea for her is to be like this, she's a very cosmic kind of villain. She, her thought, her thought processes are far and above what any of the other villains in the series have really attempted to be. Yeah. I think the best description for her is we want her to be as complicated as Greg wanted us to think Teradax was. <laughs> <laughs> but... if, Teradax, if Teradax were a chess master, this is a this is a three D chess master. Yes. Mm. What what the, the, what the, I... the general the general idea for her for her ability is that she's like a she doesn't even have a physical body. She's more like a a thought form, a sentient thought form. Well, not quite. She can, she like... does have a physical body, but she's so powerful in psionics that she kind of is able to be present in a in mm -hmm. a manifest. Mm -hmm. it, it's yeah. definitely, it's just definitely something still being discussed. Yeah, exactly. She's she a she's sort of she, because <laughs> she she can she you know she's just the, basically the power of brain <laughs> essentially brains <laughs> she can she can sort of manipulate people's perceptions and to me that's something that's sort of like if you have that yeah, ability you can kind of do anything they didn't, even notice, <laughs> yeah. She, yeah. Yeah. They didn't even notice she was there at first exactly a mysterio notice, type they deal they didn't even notice where she is like the, the the area that she is present at they could not perceive it until she until she started speaking to them that's how she was bending. She she was bending the pages of reality over each other so that she could so that she couldn't be seen. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. and and the thing the thing that I kind of sort of in my head with her characterization when I was directing it was the i the idea of her character her personality is that because because she can just very easily read people's thoughts like she has access to everything people know right mm -hmm. essentially um you can't keep secrets from her so to her she she believes what she's doing is just like c the correct thing to do because she mm -hmm. knows the truth at all times you know like the deepest truths mm -hmm. of everyone around yeah. her so so in her mind it's oh, yeah. what i was kind of envisioning was that she kind of she believes that you know her perspective isn't biased because she sees the the honest truth and she cannot be deceived. Yeah. Mm. Axon would get along well with her, I think. Yeah, cuz cuz she can yeah. she can exp she can see and experience everyone's sort of perspectives and ultimately it's perspective that kind of I ship it. Yeah, that kind of gives <laughs> creates everything in our perception, like you know, our morality and everything, you know. But um yeah. I I ship it. Axon with that thought over there. <laughs> Jesus. Be gone, thought. That, you know, that that that's so perfect. Liam, Liam called her a thought form. She is literally a thought. 
But yeah, oh so she so she um she believes, you know, here's a better way for the element lords to regain their status as rulers of the planet. And you will follow me because you Friendship. know I know best. <laughs> you know? Hmm. Yeah. And and for her it's the, it's le- it's less of like an ego and more of like a, a fact. It's like I do know best because I know everything. <laughs> yeah. Because no yeah, one yeah. can lie to me. <laughs> Yeah, I, c- I could see that. Uh, that could be a, a really interesting sort of, uh, yeah, a way to write her going forward. Mm-hmm. I sure do love Bionicle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that, but yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a short story. It was, it was sort of meant to be, um, like a teaser of what's to come for like the the, mm-hmm. for the next story arcs. You know. Yeah. Oh, I'm coming. Like, I, 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 I don't. Know. Oh my god. I, I would. <laughs> envision the elder sister being the main villain of whatever stories come after Velika and the civil mm. war and everything mm. and yes. i think setting her up now and getting all of her her puzzle pieces and her, her chess pieces in place during the civil war i think is a good way to slowly introduce her to the world oh for sure mm. for yeah sure. yeah definitely i'm stuck yes <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that's the mm-hmm. that's the gist of the story of Lord of Elements. You know, the 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 element lords are are mad at each other. Elder sister comes mm-hmm. in, talks some sense into them, and convinces them to join her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's the gist mm-hmm. of it. Yeah. Oh nice. My God. And uh, yeah, that's pretty well everything we've read this week. Yeah, mm-hmm. so it is. We did it. Oh my yes. God! In under yeah. seven hours. Well, wow! <laughs> wow! Amazing. Indeed. We've exceeded my wildest expectations. <laughs> yeah. We've got 20 Fantastic. minutes to spare. Indeed. Yeah. Oh so, That's 20 uh, minutes for pure waffle. Mm. Let's go. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, do we he have did, any... he did... oh. I was just going to say, uh, but the, the director did say we didn't have to fill the three hours, just that three right. hours was our limit. Uh, yeah, our <laughs> absolute right. principle. So this is great. Yeah. <laughs> we did a good yeah. job. Yeah. <laughs> I, I did want to ask if anybody had any overall thoughts on all the things we've discussed today. I love it. I mm, don't I'm think. I, I, I have to say that, like, considering how long we held on to the ideas of this project, and, like, even as far back as Final Farshti before, or not Final Farshti, mm. rather, the, the last episode of season one, mm. when we still just had these ideas with no real direction to actually bring them to fruition. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I I was young and stupid, and I brought them up with Greg, and he's like, oh, yeah, that's mm. kind of cool. This, this neat. And now you're older like... and stupid! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But oh, it, it, a little bit older and a little bit stupider, and I love you guys. Group hug. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is. It is a little surreal. Finally, having this project come to fruition with some mm-hmm. solid direction to mm. to finish the project and having Greg involved in its production, even That's if so he's yeah. just like, even if he's just giving us ideas and notes and we're doing the actual writing, it's still a privilege to have him involved in the project at all. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. such an air of legitimacy. Yeah. It's, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's yeah. fantastic, it's- actually. This is so good. I'm so proud of you, little baby brother. You're my little baby brother that's technically you're older than me, but you're always going to be a baby to me because you are a little insignificant baby man, but you're actually really super duper important. <laughs> it it, it reminds me of the, this of it, it reminds me of this meme that uh Toa Zantai just posted in the Missed Legacy server while we were recording, actually. He found it on his phone from ages ago, like, Time Traveler, what are you reading? Bionicle fans, reading some Bionicle book, comics, novels, and serials. Time Traveler, Greg finished the Yesterday Quest of the Powers That Be, and it's just mm-hmm. Pog I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, I gotta say, like, um, when I first started reading these, I was, I was very apprehensive about them, because I'm not the kind of person that usually reads a lot of fan fiction. I, I it, mm-hmm. for whatever reason it just never really clicked with me but reading this I don't know if it was because you had Greg's involvement or just because you guys are such good writers on this it, it really did click with me it felt like a, a genuine continuation of Bionicle this thing that I've loved my whole yeah. life and it's it's really really heartwarming to see thank yeah, you I, thank I, you. I, I, I feel the that. same way yeah it feels mm-hmm. like it feels like it feels this feels exactly like 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 if it like the the 
I can't say that it, it feels like Bionicle never left because of all the references to Bionicle having left. <laughs> being back now. Mm -hmm. But it, uh, time, time notwithstanding, it feels like Bionicle never never left. Yeah, it, 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 is real, it is really nice to hear that because, yeah, to me, like, as I said, you know, I, I held on to so many of these ideas for even when the original organization that founded this whole idea completely disbanded down to just myself and one other member. Hmm. I still held on to it because I knew that there was real promise behind that and mm. to then find the missing legacy team so many years later to bring that idea to fruition and actually stick the landing it, it feels really good yeah, yeah. to me yeah, just... it's to me it legitimately feels like bionicle has come back which is a big thing for me because mm -hmm. i i was the type of fan that bionicle like, is back baby i was mm -hmm. the type i was the type of fan where like it, the story was always the biggest draw to me like, mm -hmm. I was always more into the mm -hmm. books and stuff than the sets. Um, oh, yeah. So... I like both. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, and, and so I was just like, you know, when this series original, originally got discontinued, I was, I was really sad for a while. And to me, that was the thing I wanted the most to come back. Mm -hmm. and, me too. And now, because for me, because of Greg's involvement, you know, in just in general, mm -hmm. to me, it makes it feel like personally for me like extra legitimate for me yeah in yeah. terms of like this is this is how it could have probably would have been or whatever you know and, and that's been a bit of a, a fine line to walk because yeah. when at the beginning when gonal first mentioned that we're getting greg involved we needed to be we wanted to be very careful to make sure that people knew that we weren't trying to make this canon. Greg didn't even yes. have the power to make it canon. We don't want to step on anyone's toes creating their own fan fiction. Right? I'm going to step on our, people's toes. Our MO from the beginning, even before Greg's involvement, was to just write fan fiction that is canon compliant as close to his vision as possible. Hmm. Having him involve now just means that it is extra easy to maintain that vision yeah and yeah. plus mm -hmm. to me and this is this is my personal opinion and not does not reflect the opinions of miss and legacy <laughs> gonna say this here um to me personally it's like because greg can't actually like canonize anything anymore like bionicle will just will never get officially any new content canonized mm -hmm. this is to me this is as close as possible it can be to like canon you know, yeah. like yeah, in, a in a practical sense. Going into it. Yeah, in any mm -hmm. practical sense, because we got, you know, the person who was writing the serials, overseeing it, you know, giving notes and giving the general like outline of what what was the ideas were planned, mm -hmm. and also it's just good, <laughs> and it's like written <laughs> in, a, in a very similar style, you know. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, that that definitely helps. <laughs> yeah, you like because the style itself is also that. pretty consistent with. There, there, there were definitely. Effects. That there were definitely some things people, you know, had took issue with. Like maybe we we killed off two yet a little early. People, some I there were strangely. There's still, fewer... there's still an um, there's still an all or two lying around <laughs> the universe. You can grab another one. It's fine. There, there were there, I think there were strangely fewer complaints about killing off Artaka, but that's probably because everyone on some level knew that he was going to be the next target. Yeah. Artaka's uh, power is too broken. He his mass power basically uh, essentially makes him a great being for all intents and purposes. I mean, so, you say that, but then we turned around and made the elder sister. So, uh, <laughs> well, she's a villain, though. Ah, uh, well, that's fair enough. Yeah. Villains being overpowered is is more acceptable. Mm. Yeah, because Artaka could just turn around and fix all the problems. Mm -hmm. Because his his mass power is being able to fix everything. Yeah, yeah. And, and that that really brings up like I, I had a weird conversation the other day in the missing legacy server about the the practicality of the great beings creations. Yeah. I, I've I've always headcanoned that the 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 only reason they thought that building a giant super robot to bring the planet back together was a good idea was because their interactions with a Nona drove them a little crazy in addition to making them smarter. Yeah. Probably. And, may, they, and maybe other... also, maybe also it's like creatively fulfilling for them. Yeah. Cause like you said, yeah. they, they create, they create compulsively. 
Right. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then there exactly. are other things too, like supposedly, it, like th- this whole thing started with a conversation about the Vahi and the Vahi being created to to fix problems in the universe that were very time sensitive and they didn't have time to do that there were some other things in the universe like they didn't have time to create the vahi in addition to the other legendary masks so they just left the blueprint for it but Hmm. then they have characters like artaka which can just like create things at will at any given (laughs) moment so why didn't they just create the Vahi, use that to slow down time, and then instead of creating a bunch of Matoran <laughs> to build the universe, just create a bunch of Artaka clones to create the universe. <laughs> yeah. It's not aesthetic. They that's why. They, ha- they have ADHD. There you go. It's not aesthetic. <laughs> that's, have, that's the reason. They're extremely good at making things, but they have ADHD and cannot for the life of them coherently put together a single dang plan. <laughs> the yeah. way I see it, like, the great okay, we gotta always... save the planet. We gotta save the planet. Let's build a giant robot. How will that save the planet? We gotta save the planet. Let's build a giant <laughs> yes. robot. Let's build two <laughs> giant robots. Yeah. Yes. Levi, what were you gonna say? I was gonna say the way I see it. I've always seen the great being the closest things in this universe. Oh. So, sorry, oh. you, you, oh, cut, no, out yeah, you cut out. Oh, you cut out. Sorry yeah. about that. Um, I've always yeah, seen the great always... beings as the closest things in this universe. Yes, we're, we're almost so, out of time, so we gotta we gotta wrap it up. up. I feel like the, the closest things in this universe to human beings with human motive. Mm. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Right yes, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, bloody hell, human my motorboat. Yes, out. let's go. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, we got I really think it fits the the not perfect. Yeah. Yeah. No. yeah, they make mistakes constantly, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that, that's even going as to be, smart as they are. That's going mm-hmm. to be a huge theme going forward in the the stories of the great beings. I think Angons mm-hmm. in particular is becoming hyper aware of the shortcomings of their their little group. Yeah, mm-hmm. they're they're good at mechanics and stuff, but they they don't have a lot of foresight. Recognize that they're idiots. Ah, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah, they don't I have a lot that, of foresight. But, yeah. Mm-hmm. With that, I think we should wrap up here. So, anyone, anyone have any final shrinkage! thoughts? I, I guess significant shrinkage. God, that's for that's bringing it back. <laughs> My only final thought is that you guys have done an excellent job. I really, I was expecting to come into this with the ability at the end to say, "Well done, guys. you've you've done a good job here." But really, I feel like this actually fits as an ending. It really does. I'm oh, so yeah. glad. It's I'm so glad you think so. Together. And That's, we've um... we've only got more coming because oh, yeah. you know Gano wanted us to go over the the timeline of Greg quotes for things for the future at the end, and you you can we'll link that with the episode, but it goes over things like the Great Being Civil War, other things mm-hmm. moving forward, and that's what we have planned is at least another two arcs to this story. Right. Nice. That would yeah. end off like the entire, not just like these unfinished serials now, but the entirety of G One's planned story. Mm-hmm. Uh, just briefly on that, yes, for the people who are listening on radio and might not be able to click a link afterwards, um, where could they go to find those materials? Ah, uh, they can ah. find it on Bionicle Sector One. Bionicle and- Sector and- 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 One. <laughs> Okay. So, with that in mind, next week, or next, uh, two weeks from now, I guess, next we will episode. be reading some, next episode, yes, we'll be reading some of the rest of the Missing Legacy catalog that was made before Vision of the Great Beings, but is still just as canon compliant, then mm-hmm. that will comprise Old War Rahi, Understanding, The Mentor's Way, and Enemies of Metro Nui. Fantastic. Yeah. Brilliant. Mm. All right. Mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to it. Hell yeah. yeah. Definitely. I'm a kitty cat. Indeed. (laughs) And with that, significant shrinkage indeed. We will see you next episode, everyone. Well, should, 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 we, should we end off by saying like where people can find us on the internet? Don't stop coming, and it don't stop coming, and it don't stop coming. 
<laughs> Indeed, that that might be a good idea. Um, mm-hmm. You can find us on our YouTube channel, The Beaver House, on Spotify, and every other week uh, between 9 p.m. and midnight on Sheridan Life Radio, the college radio station that I am currently working with to bring this to a new audience. So if you have listened up to this point on the radio station and previously had no idea what Bionicle was and were apprehensive mm-hmm. about giving this series a chance, thank you very much for listening to the end. We appreciate your Thank you for spending your time with us. Indeed. I love you! I'm a cat! Indeed. <laughs> we will see you next episode, everyone. Bye-bye! Bye-bye! Okay, good. I'm going to go to the bathroom. Nobody talk about me behind my back because I will be able to hear you from my from my wireless headphones. Yeah. Mm. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so so how so how about that Josie? Isn't she a bitch? <laughs> <laughs> no, she's several bitches in a trench coat. <laughs> I heard you call me the B word. I'm putting that in the jar. <laughs> mm-hmm.